Let's get going. There are people who need our help. Come on, enough standing around, let's keep moving. Let's get going. There are people who need our help. Definitely be something. 
something that catches your eye. <clears throat> Come on, enough standing around, let's keep moving. Haven't you heard? There's a strange wanderer near Wolfendom. Wanderer near Wolfendom. Take a look. There will definitely be something that catches your eye. definitely be something that catches your eye. Let's get going. There are people who need our help. you heard? There's a strange wanderer near Wolfendom. Come on. Enough standing around. Let's keep moving. Let's get going. There are people who need our help. Haven't you heard? There's a strange wanderer near Wolfendom. <clears throat> Haven't you heard? 
There's a strange wanderer in your wolf and young. you heard? It's been getting There's a strange recently. wanderer in your wolf and dump. you heard? There's a strange wanderer in your wolf and dumb. Come on. Enough standing around. Let's keep moving. It's been getting quite busy recently. Let's keep moving. Once, there was a glorious kingdom established among the heavens. From that kingdom came a crowned heir, tasked with seeking out the Genesis Pearl from the Kingdom of Darkness. The first crowned heir began her journey of seeking the Pearl. But she... No sé por qué me ha salido eso. No sé por qué me ha salido eso, pero bueno. Empanada tempestuosa. A ver. Pero esa ya la tengo.
No sé por qué está eso. Pero por qué no se me quita, tío. Bueno, a ver. loco aquí, tío. Pero así. ¡Bam! Así del tirón. A ver, el... <coughs> ¿Dónde era lo de... A ver. Tengo recompensa de expedición. Come take a look. There will definitely be something that catches your eye. Add Astra Abyssosk. Welcome. Wow. Add Astra Abyssosk. I am sorry. Add Astra Abyssosk.
Vale. Eh, no sé por qué... Ni se han inmutado. <ríe> Qué guapo. Madame Pink. Ah, all things must change. Uh, it's nothing. It's nothing. I just thought it a great shame that so many of these glazed lilies have wilted. What happened to them? Back in my day, people said that glazed lilies can read human hearts. If they heard beautiful sounds like laughter and singing, they would also bloom joyfully. But... If they heard too much wild gossip or slander. So that means these flowers feel what's happening in Lilith? Yes. The rumors of Rex Lapis's death are no small matter. They are... Some say it was a Fatui plot. Others say that the Chising made it all up. And still others think that that which lies in the deep is breaking free. This harbor is like a mountain of dry tinder. Well, I shall say no more. This old woman's grown too old and naggy. Did you have something to say, youngster? Ah, that old trinket. <laughs> I remember it being here with me, but I've grown old. <laughs> I can't quite recall where it is exactly. An old friend of mine used to wear it on his person. Back when I was young, he saw me gazing at it often and gave it to me. But he told me then that if someone should come to borrow that bell, I should not be loath to part with it. It has been many years, and who knows how many times someone has come to borrow this bell. Still, though, I can't recall when it started. It's been a long time since anyone has come to borrow it. Oh, these old bones are so slow to look for things. I doubt you can wait that long. What a weird thing to be proud of. 
All right, children, there is no need to worry. I didn't place the bell very far away. Eh? Do you live near here, Granny? Whoa, but this is Eugene Terrace. It's gotta be expensive. Oh, an old lady like me can't afford to buy a place in this city. See this ceramic teapot? My entire household is in here. How does that work? What? There's no way Paimon would fit in there. <laughs> and why do you need Paimon to go in anyway? Can't you just lift the lid and look inside? <laughs> oh, youngsters. I simply mean that the bell is somewhere inside this teapot, and you are quite welcome to borrow it. This granny is so weird. What does she mean her whole household is in here? Is she playing with us? Youngsters, this is where this old woman keeps all her things. Quickly now, go no. fetch that bell. Whoa! That's... Whoa! Since Granny last swept 
this place. Got something for ya. Oh, you. Da hora, tá? Hey. 
Ha 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 It would be nice if we 
had one of these too. Or at least we wouldn't have to camp outside. Esta es la tetera ya. Ah no, la campana purificadora. Oh, you found it. The youngsters are so quick on their feet. Oh, now, let me see. All right, that'll do. Come on out now, children. In and out in no time. You youngsters really are quick. The Chi Sing. Those children stopped letting my friends and I into their council long ago. Still, they've done well recently. We old folks are content to be idle. Ah. Hyman kinda knows what you mean. But it's also kind of confused. Are you really giving us the bell just like that, Granny? Don't you think it's weird? Something's just happened to Rex Lapis, and then we come running up asking for it? Oh, don't be silly. Leo Harbor has been through a great deal in its history. In that time, it has seen the departure of countless Adepti. But no matter what, we have always performed the rite of parting first before any other matters. To cry, catch the murderer at the top of one's lungs, but ignore the rite of parting. That, to me, is what is wrong-headed. Now that you have come to borrow the bell, I guess that perhaps an old friend of mine has finally decided to take matters into their own hands. So, why would I be unwilling to lend you the bell? Hey! It belongs to Granny! We're supposed to return what we borrow! Oh! Let you keep it. <laughs> you really are a frank child. If you want it, you can keep it. But this bell gets homesick sometimes. Who knows? It might find its way back into these old hands. Well, you must have things to do. Since you have the bell, you should return. Oh, and do tell the person who sent you that if they have time, they can come over for tea. I don't have much to offer, but you can always count on an old lady for a pot of tea. We will. Thanks, Granny.
<laughs> Indeed, this is the cleansing bell. Hmm. It's in good condition. Let's place the perfume we've prepared inside. Of course. How would I know that the bell was with her otherwise? Cierto. That's suspicious. But if you don't want to talk about it, we won't pry. Oh, yes! That old granny asked us to tell you something. If you have the time, you can come over for tea. I don't have much to offer, but you can always count on an old lady for a pot of tea. <laughs> that tone does not suit you. Still, her teapot is indeed very good. There are none better for brewing tea. When a suitable time arrives, I'll bring a spot of fine tea and pay her a visit. So what's the next step in our preparations? Hmm. Next, we need to purchase kites. Ooh, Paimon loves kites! Are you taking us kite flying? Is this our break time? <laughs> no, no. Kites are children's toys, yes. But they also play various symbolic roles in Liyue's rituals. I will explain it to you. But our next course of action should probably be to purchase the kites first. Oh, sure. Curiouser and curiouser. You're here. The seven kites you asked for have been made to order. Would you like to take them now? Yes, thank you. It's rare to see customers who want to buy this type of kite nowadays. In the early days, we used to get orders from people of all walks of life. Well, this is Mr. Zhang Li, from the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor, so he's probably well-versed in all these walks of life. We've talked about a whole bunch of things while traveling with him. He seems to know Liyue's favorite topics, money and government, really well, but he likes talking about less useful topics instead. Well, that's because I prefer to share fun things with you. <laughs> Children's toys are very fun things, that's for sure. I enjoy watching the children at play as much as anyone else. But there is more to it than that. Finely crafted toys are well loved by children, but this craft itself has been honed over thousands of years, and there is meaning behind that. I have made kites in Liyue for 40 years, and I am intimately familiar with the forms passed down from my ancestors. The meaning of these seven kites is far from banal. Indeed. These are decorations used in the rite of parting. The seven kites represent the seven. I took the liberty of coloring outside the lines when doing the insignia of the Animo Archon. As for the kite that honors the Geo Archon, one must follow the contract given right down to the last letter. These patterns are ancient, and you can also find them in the Golden House. Ah, Paimon's heard that name before! Huh? The design of this kite displays a firm grasp on the cyclicality and eternity so dear to the Electro Archon. These markings of tree and leaf 
pay due honor to wisdom and the passage of time. All this on a single kite. Truly astonishing. Justice flows across the surface of the waters. War rages like a flame. As does that which the Cryo Archon once... <sighs> yes. These details are masterfully done. <laughs> the compliments of a learned man truly are pleasant. Well then, Granny Shen, I shall take these back with me. As for the payment... Well, allow me. Hey, it's Child! <laughs> no, I was merely passing through. I see Mr. Zhang Li's the same as ever. When paying, well, when getting others to pay for him, he neither looks at the price tag nor his wallet. He knows a great deal about money, and about the trials of the common man, who just doesn't consider poverty to be something that could ever happen to him. Or perhaps, you could say that he cannot imagine himself lacking money. How has he not died of hunger yet? <laughs> Child, you are as fond of jokes as ever. Well then, since we've purchased our kites without incident, there's no need to take a break before moving to the next step in our preparations. The right of parting requires helping hands as well as materials. We should be able to find some people near the harbor. Oh, by the way, take this bag of money. You probably won't want to let Zhang Li do the bargaining, if you know what I mean. Hmm, seems I missed out on some interesting information. I suppose I'll just have to find a more opportune moment next time. Hiring help? Sure. But let me just say first that I'm a reserve member of the Adventurers Guild. I take adventuring commissions, but I don't do anything clerical. Adventure? Venturing into the mountains to capture a few crystal flies seems adventurous enough. Eh? That's not hard. Almost a bit too easy for a reserve adventurer. Ah, never mind. I'll only charge you 15,000, Mora. What say you? A most fair price. A pleasure doing business with you. Capitan Gu. El otro que se llama Pan, que es el Team Pan Pum. Always put in 100% effort into everything I do. Of course, there'll be a premium if you want me to give 110%. So what's the job? Let me see. We are still missing some wooden implements over at Yujing Terrace. They aren't uncommon objects, so I didn't make any special preparations for them. No problem. That'll be 20,000 Mora for a single trip. How does that sound? Done. Oh, you're a straight shooter, huh? We have a deal. Si no, yo tengo Mora seguro. No, no me, no me gasto nunca nada. A ver, está por aquí. ¿Qué abajo o qué? ¿Arriba? Se acaba de pasar en plan. Ah, no, está ahí. A full day of odd jobs at Yujing Terrace. Hmm. No problem. 25,000 per day. A fair trade, yes? 
Whoa, that's expensive. Um, could you give us a bit of a discount on account of the whole Hero of Mondstadt thing? Hero of Mondstadt? Never heard of them. Well, you may never have heard of this hero, but it seems you've heard of Mora nonetheless. Thus, this is all you've got? Then no can do. Child? No, no, no. He's putting up the money? Uh, still no. Uh, wouldn't that mean I have to make two trips rather than one? How about this? Let's make a trade. I'll take what you're offering right now and find me a high-quality Lotus Head. I'll consider that my detour fee paid and go find What's-His-Face Child. How about it? Guess we've got no choice. Pero cabeza del otro tengo yo. Have you brought the goods? Oh, that looks good. I'm hitting the kitchen tonight, and it's not often that I get to use such fresh and high-end ingredients. Well, I'll head to Yujing Terrace in a moment. I won't be late. Claro, cabeza del otro tenía. All finished then? Splendid. Any leftover cash is yours to keep. A favor for the Fatui should never go unrewarded. You think you can buy us off with some loose change? No way! Paimon demands to know when the next payment is coming! <laughs> well, how does this sound? You give me the information I need, and maybe I'll leave the Northland Bank's vaults open and unattended for half an hour. What info do you need? Does that mean you know what he's after? Yikes! You're right! Signora! <laughs> you both need to calm down. I don't know what's gotten into you. Just what is this about? The atmosphere got so tense all of a sudden. <laughs> Next, we need some everlasting incense. For this, we need to go to Boo Boo Pharmacy, the finest pharmacy in all of... Is... everything okay? Everything is fine. I was just informing them that they need not return the surplus Mora. Now if you'll excuse me, I must be going. Paimon definitely felt like Child wasn't happy with us just now. Welcome to Boo Boo Pharmacy. Huh? Did you hear that? Where did it come from? The reception, it seems. How about you go check it out and Paimon will bring up the rear?
This one over here. What's the talisman doing on her forehead? It can't be. She's a zombie. Welcome to Boo Boo Pharmacy. I am Chi Chi. Once upon a time, Chi Chi died. Then, Chi Chi was saved by the Adepti. Now, Chi Chi is a zombie. Something like this would be unimaginable in Mondstadt. Uh, hello, little girl. Do you sell everlasting incense here? Excuse me, sir. Did you bring your prescription? I... Surely no prescription is needed to purchase everlasting incense. It's not a controlled substance. Chi-Chi can get your medicine. But only if you show Chi-Chi your prescription. The Zombies are limited to acting within the confines of their orders. And somehow, in this case, the zombie issues her own orders to herself. My dear Chi-Chi, we didn't bring a prescription, I'm afraid. But we do hope that you can still help us find some everlasting incense. Okay, then. How did you manage that? But Chi-Chi helps you. You help Chi-Chi. Only fair. Since when do customers need to do favors for customer service staff? Never mind. Just think of it as a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. That way, everybody wins. Sometimes in Liyue, the art of the deal is simply about victory via mental gymnastics. Go to Mount Tianhong, find the Guizhong Ballista, and hunt a cocoa goat. Please and thank you. <laughs> Guizhong Ballista. I have heard of this device before. It's a kind of crossbow turret, installed on Mount Chinhong by an adeptus in the distant past. An early mechanical device. Located in Chinhong Pass, it was designed to automatically fire at large monsters, protecting Liyue from external threats. Mr. Zhang Li really knows Liyue inside out. Apparently not quite. This is the first I have ever heard of the Coco Goat. The Coco Goat is a legendary animal. An adept beast. Did you want to add anything else, or...? No. Just that the Coco Goat is a legendary animal. An adept beast. What it looks like... Don't know. Where to find it? Don't know either. Where it came from? Also don't know. Very well then. Let's start by investigating near the Guizhong Ballista. Perhaps we will find some clues. <sighs> what the heck is a coca goat? Coco goat. Go find it. <laughs> Alright. can totally believe it took an adeptus to build this. 
but how do you operate this thing? Just think how much strength you would need. Hmm. It is currently inoperable in any case. This device is broken. Ah, oh, what? It broke? After millennia of wear and tear, even Adepti contraptions are difficult to maintain. So what are we gonna do? Quick, Mr. Zhongli, use your unlimited high society knowledge powers! Hmm. You almost make it sound like I'm some sort of bourgeois parasite whose only utility lies in providing quaint pieces of trivia on demand. That said, let me think for a moment. Ah, yes. Spare parts were made for the Guizhong Ballista when it was first built, in case it was damaged in battle. As I recall, there is a military supply post from that period somewhere inside the pass. If we can retrieve the spare parts from where they are stored, we may be able to repair the Guizhong Ballista. One just needs to understand the basic working principles of the device. So... what you're saying is that you actually understand the working principles? I have a smattering of knowledge on the topic. With the parts in hand, I could at least tinker with it. Ready? One, two, three, four. Yeah. Pero que yo recuerde esas cosas no las de antes. These parts look useful. One moment. I will try to repair the device. It is done. The Guizhong Ballista is more intricately designed than I thought. Ooh! Now how do we turn it on? It's easy enough. We simply need to do this. Look. It even has a scope. Over here? Nothing. And over there, more nothing. Hey! Just what do you think you're doing? So you fixed up this turret because you're planning to do what exactly? Not a turret. A Guizhong Ballista. Also, kindly state your name before you ask a question. It's just good manners. <laughs> Are you blind or something? You're looking at the leader of the treasure hoarders, old man. This area is supposed to be chock full of hidden treasures. 
but you can't get anywhere near them with this thing keeping watch. <laughs> it might look like any other mechanical device, but trust me, it's got a mind of its own. Last time we approached the mountain, it nearly skewered one of our guys. A few of us risked our lives to disarm it, which amazingly we managed. And then we turn our backs for two seconds, and you've already gone and repaired it! The next thing you'll be repairing is your faces! And that's if you get out of this alive! Tut tut. Vandalizing the legacy of an Adeptus for selfish gain. Disgraceful behavior. It is not we who need reprimanding, but you. this way. Ah, que hay uno aquí. <laughs> Another test. 
Ya decía yo. This 
is a new one. Troubling ourselves over this rabble is not worth the time. We should focus on our contract with Chi-Chi. Oh, yeah, that! So we've got the Guizhong Ballista working, but where's our coca goat? A search using the Guizhong Ballista revealed no significant life forms nearby, save for the usual wildlife. What's more, a contraption built using Adeptus technology should have no trouble detecting an Adeptibeast, as Chi-Chi put it. Ah, <sighs> which means... A Paimon wouldn't go that far. We did something positive, right? <sighs> we won't solve anything while standing here and racking our brains. Let's return to Boo Boo Pharmacy, <laughs> explain that we could not find a Cocoa Goat, and review our next step. Good idea. We did our best, and that's what counts. Forgive us. We were unable to fulfill our end of the contract. We found no trace of the Coco Goat Adeptibeast of which you speak. <sighs> what a disappointment. Don't worry about it. But I feel very disappointed. Aw, poor Chi Chi. Why does Paimon feel so guilty all of a sudden? Cocoa goat milk is tasty. So tasty. Much better than normal goat milk. Only an Adeptibeast could make such tasty milk. I'm sorry. I have a poor memory. I cannot remember the name of the milk. That's why I wrote it down. Where did I put it? Ah, here. This is the name. Coconut milk. Huh? <sighs> I owe you both an apology. I hastily agreed to what appeared to be an equitable agreement with this zombie child, when perhaps I should have undertaken further due diligence. Never mind, Zhongli. You didn't know. As the Liyue proverb goes, all things are random, and... Um... So how are you supposed to predict anything? Literally no one could have seen this coming. Excuse me, everyone. Did Chi-Chi say a bad thing? Oh... Sorry, but Paimon's gonna leave the job of shattering this poor kiddo's world to you. No... Im... Impossible... Seems Chi-Chi took this pretty hard. <laughs> Someone learnt a valuable life lesson today, then. Thank you all for looking after my little Chi-Chi. Might I ask who? Ah, how rude of me. I'm Baiju, boss of the Boo Boo Pharmacy. I meant that Chi-Chi was the boss. Turns out it's some wacko who wears medicinal ingredients around his neck. 
In what a sorry state of affairs. This little mascot is even more of a simpleton <laughs> than Chi Chi. Ah, the medicine, the snake is speaking! <laughs> I prefer to stay silent, but faced with strangers, I must speak, lest you mistake me for an escapee from the medicine cabinet, for I am a living, breathing serpent! <laughs> Don't mind Chung Shung. She's a good girl, really. As for you three, communal chaos causing with Chi-Chi aside, what business brings you here? Do you sell everlasting incense in this fine establishment? Everlasting incense? Why, of course we do. Phew, at last. Things are finally starting to come together. Three million mora. Top quality. Guaranteed. You might as well just rob the Golden House. Oh, but the Chasing have taken it over for now. Security will be tighter than usual. Hmm. Three million. An innocuous number in and of itself. Though practically speaking, it could be a hard sum to come by. It's a crazy number. We'd never be able to make that much more. And as for Mr. Zhang Li, he's around three million short. <laughs> This is correct. What are we gonna do? Is this the part where we go crawling back to child? <laughs> Coco goat. Coco goat. <laughs> my sides hurt. Oh my goodness. I cannot believe you fell for that. Hey, less laughter, more sympathy. I'm almost in tears over here. Ah, uh, thank you. That was the best laugh I've had in a long time. In return, I'm more than happy to sort out this mess you've managed to get yourselves into. Excuse me, sir. Dr. Baiju, isn't it? Truly honored. I'm Child, one of the Fatui Harbingers. Forgive my audacity, but I see a great many opportunities for us to collaborate in the future. If Boo Boo Pharmacy needed a stable supply of, say, coconut milk, the Fatui could help by setting up a robust and speedy distribution network. Strange. I knew the Fatui infiltrated businesses with seductive deals, but so much fuss over coconut milk? Coconut milk. Baiju, quick. Chi-Chi wants coconut milk. Ah, yes, of course, Chi-Chi. Anything you want. Thank you, child. I look forward to a successful collaboration in the future. I can give you a discount on that everlasting incense, too. Let's say 2,990,000 mora. That's like zero difference from 3 million! Hmm. 2,990,000. Also an innocuous number in and of itself. <laughs> Though practically speaking, it is a whole 10,000 less than the original sum of 3 million. Well, now that this is settled, we must head back to Yujing Terrace. Mr. Child, Dr. Baiju, little Miss Chi Chi, see you soon. Ah, that lot is an absolute riot. Honestly, I can't remember the last time I laughed so hard. So, you've been eavesdropping, I hope. What have I missed? Yes, Master Child. They spoke of the Qixing taking the Golden House. Well, well, well. Ningguang and her Qixing cronies. What else would they be hiding in the Golden House, if not the Exuvia? I apologize, but I warned you, didn't I? As the old Liyue saying goes, the walls have ears. This is good. There will be coconut milk from now on. Yes, it's good.
Yeah, I'm going to Are you buying or not? Well, as it stands, we've hired helpers, and we've acquired the Everlasting Incense. The completion of our preparations is not far off. Ooh, finally! Well, Traveler, have you gained anything from our adventure so far? Odd. <laughs> Which is it, I wonder? The questions that such travels raise are ever so complicated. Well... I'll leave you to ruminate over it yourself. As to remuneration for your help, I've decided to treat you to a meal. Oh, ah, yes, don't worry. I will remember to bring the Mora this time. Tonight, I shall take you both to an old hole in the wall, praised throughout Lyra. Hole in the wall? As in a cool restaurant? <laughs> Indeed. Let us meet near the harbor. At third round knockout. <clears throat> Betting on 
Ah, you're here. There's no need to order. I've already done so. Third round knockout is not for lightweights, like those taverns in Mondstadt. Here, the owner does not take such unorthodox orders as fruit juice. I ordered some wine-fermented sweet rice balls for you, if that counts. If it is to your liking, dear customers, I shall continue the tale of Lady Ningguan's Jade Chamber. Hey! There's even a storyteller here! Great atmosphere! Besides fine wine, the excellent ambiance is the reason why this place is so well-loved. But when I say ambiance, I refer to a different sort from the one the Tevat Travel Guide uses to judge other establishments. As you all know, High above the land of Liyue lies a pavilion in the clouds, a palace in the mist. What does it mean to have all-seeing eyes? This, my friends, Lady Ningguan's masterwork that bridges earth and sky. Imagine, the weather is clear, and you gaze down from the deck on the world below. Behold! The glorious sights of Liyue Harbor, stretching out far and wide. They say that when Lady Ningguan ponders important affairs, she retreats to her jade chamber with none but her three closest confidants in tow. Why brings she these trusted three to sift through sources Dig through documents, looking for information. Piece by piece, facts and figures paint a picture on the walls of the chamber. But well before the wall is filled, Lady Ningguang's mind is made up. Having made her call, she has every last document shredded, and whoosh, she scatters the shavings out her window. Ah, look at them, how they billow in the wind like a sudden swirling blizzard. As the fragments fall, traces of text flicker before the eyes of the merchants of Liyuan, like ink stains and white snow. The saying goes, the rarest treasures in the land are the words brought by the paper snow. For the words of the Tianquan, have the power to move mountains, and all throughout the land know it. These are but scraps of paper, and yet they guide Lady Ningguang's hand. Such is their value. Merely grasping one or two of them will surely gift you a fragment of her wisdom. Enough to stay a step or two ahead of your peers. Tianquan Ningguang. Feels like we're hearing this name a lot. Liyue locals talk about her. The Fatui hate her. She's most likely the one who hid the Exuvia. And we saw her at the Rite of Dissension. Huh. Paimon wonders what sort of person she is. At last I have found you. You who returned from Juayun Karst. Who's there? Wait, I am not with the Millilith, nor am I here to claim your bounty. However, I am an emissary of the Liyue Chising. My name is Ganyu, secretary at the Yuahai Pavilion, and I have come specifically to meet you. Well, in concrete terms, I am the corporate secretary for the Chising. At the moment, I am serving as Lady Ningguang's special emissary. Ningguang sent you? We were literally just talking about her. My apologies, you who have returned from Jiayun Karst. I am duty-bound and cannot extend my courtesy to you in full. But I have with me a letter from Lady Ningguang. She extends a formal invitation to you in her capacity as Tianquan. She invites you to her palace in the sky. An official invitation? Lady Ningguang said this. 
Invite her to come here. I wish to meet her. At the Jade Chamber, together we shall snip every one of these entwining dark threads. And with that, the emissary who called herself Ganyu just disappeared. But we've received an invitation from the Liyue at Qixing. Paimon still can't believe it! We'll be meeting people that have way more money than Paimon could ever count! We should be on our best manners! <laughs> An invitation to visit the Jade Chamber is a rare honor indeed. You'd best be on your way now. But don't forget about the rite of parting. Once you've finished at the Jade Chamber, meet me at Dihua Marsh. Don't worry, we won't forget! Dihua Marsh. We'll see you there! Ah, tengo una aquí. A toast to our success. Astra Abyssosk. Welcome to the Adventurous Guild. en ascenso vale eso es lo que tengo que hacer las misiones diarias tampoco misiones de encargo esas son las diarias no habla con rudolf Yeah. 
protect us. Pero eso, no... <risa> Pero eso no lo hacía antes, seguro. Eso ya te lo digo yo. <risa> A ver, gelatina no tengo. Más que azúcar. ¿Qué hay aquí algo aquí dentro? Ah, hay un... Como un desafío Ya ves Pero tío, ya me he caído dos o tres veces, eh. Eso antes no lo decía, eh. Yo te lo digo yo. This rat. Look up there. That's the Jade Chamber. Well, so 
since we want to go to the Jade Chamber, heading to its location on the map is the sensible thing to do. Let's look around. There has to be a way up there nearby. Pero, ¿cómo llego ahí? Eso es nuevo, eso antes no lo decía. ¿eh? Ahora habla más. Hablan más.
<clears throat> halt! Who trespasses on these hallowed grounds? Exactly. What are you talking about? We're invited guests. What makes you think you can treat us like this? No. Wait. Maybe this was Ningwan's plan all along. She pretended to invite us to the Jade Chamber, but set up a megalith ambush here to arrest us. Ugh. Now Paimon's mad. You, over there. This is a trick. What is a it? Oh, shameless. What? We're just on guard duty. What do you mean, shameless? What nonsense. Seize these suspicious intruders at once. Well, here they come. Line them up and knock them down. Que yo creo que si me bajo... Two arms. Yo creo que si me bajo... Take the target alive. Es tremendo. 
free attack. I have some for you too. Try not to enjoy. Take this. Try it! Dodge this! What's all this about? Lady Kutching. These two strange people suddenly appeared. They seem to have designs on the Guizhong Ballista. Who are you calling strange? Hmm? You want to go to the Jade Chamber? Who are you? We're invited guests here to look for the Lira Qixing. Who are you? <laughs> well, as it happens, I am one of the Liyue Qixing. Oh! I'm Kuching, the Yuhung of the Qixing. I know of you, Traveler. You're Ningguang's guests, yes? Didn't expect to meet you here in the mountains. Wow. Paimon didn't think we'd meet some super rich big shot out here in the middle of nowhere either. The Guizhong Ballista in Tianhong Pass has long been in disrepair. And yet, it was fixed in a single night. I came here to investigate that occurrence. These Millilith are just here to guard the scene, not to arrest anyone. So, this was all a misunderstanding? Baimon never would have thought. Anyway, for a mortal to be able to repair an Adepti mechanism is quite the mystery, even to the Chising. Jade Chamber? Just call me Kuching. I'd say that Ningguang's purpose is to request that the savior of Mondstadt take a more neutral stance. Or at least, to not wholly side with the Adepti. We're not taking sides. We spoke with the Adepti. They want to protect Liu as well. When you say protect, you're referring to their sanctimonious arrogance, aren't you? Huh? You are mortals and thus under their protection. There was no way they would have regarded you as someone with the ability to assassinate a god. Naturally, they would also regard Ningguang's locking down the area, questioning the citizenry, and pursuit of the assassin to be pointless work. Perhaps they even wonder if there might be a cover-up. I'll say it like it is. They're underestimating us. Well, you've got a point there. Still... Seen a person from Liyue who doesn't respect the gods or the Adepti. <laughs> Should I respect the shallow sense of time and condescension to mortals that has caused them to delay in moving against us, Chising? Forget it. I shouldn't speak of them this way. This skepticism is mine alone, and Ningguang does not share it. Either way, I will admit that the actions of the Adepti this time were quite restrained. Rex Lapis's death is indeed an extraordinary circumstance. But to think that they would call for a council of Adepti rather than come down here directly. How surprisingly civilized of them. Well, for Ningguang, she would talk anything and everything out if she could. But I doubt we can do that here. The time of the Adepti has long passed. If even the Liyue Qixing don't want to face that truth, then what future is there for Liu? <sighs> Another super <clears throat> bold statement. <sighs> I'll stop here. Honestly, I hadn't intended to say so much. But you're a good listener, Traveler. You should both be off to the Jade Chamber. Don't be late now. Ningguang's schedule is packed to the gills all the way till next year. 
The cream of Liyue's mercantile crop all see as sending to the Jade Chamber is the greatest honor. Each brings rich gifts as they visit, all to curry a little favor with Ningguang. Favor? But... but... wait! That's right! Greeting gifts are a staple of Liyue's culture! We need to get one! Not to curry favor or anything, just to... Respect Liu's culture! Alright, alright. You can decide on your greeting gift yourselves. Let me tell you how to get to the Jade Chamber first. You didn't actually have to come to Mount Tianhong. Go back to Liyue Harbor. Find a guide at the Yuehai Pavilion, and... Well then. May we meet again, Traveler. Well, that Yu Hung may not respect the gods, but Paimon thinks she's a pretty cool person. So, what should we give to Ningguang when we see her? Oh, right! Paimon dreamed of an amazing snack last night! Sugar frosted slime! Paimon has a feeling that it would be perfect for a super rich person like Ningguang. Why don't we go with that for a gift? Nope! But Paimon's sure that we just need to make it with some boom shakalaka! Let's go gather ingredients! Time waits for no one, and neither will our riches. Pero eso es nuevo, no, y eso nunca lo había visto. Que se ponga a llover y caigan rayos. Yo nunca lo había visto. Eso tampoco, tío, que es un nuevo, loco. Ha! 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 Ha!
Thank you for your help, kind travelers. If you hadn't come to my aid, I surely would have rotted in this cell. Those treasure hoarders. When their mood was good, they'd rearrange those pots of sweet flowers. When they were in a bad mood, they'd rearrange my face. Oh, I was nothing. No need to thank us all at once or anything. <laughs> I understand. Don't worry. I will compensate you both. Don't say that. I only escaped this predicament because of you. I'm Meng Dan, a supplier for Mingxing Jewelry in Liyue Harbor. I often walk around these mountains in search of antiques. I never expected that those treasure hoarders would have their eyes on the same ruins that I had. Before I knew it, they'd caught and imprisoned me. Is there anything that you lack? Uh, antiques, treasure, various knickknacks, you name it. Well, as long as you want what I have to offer, of course. Wait a moment! Actually, we are looking for something. Oh? And what might that be? Do you have a box that can store presents? We'd like a pretty one. The kind that you can use to store snacks. Of course we do. How can one sell antiques without gift boxes? At Mingxing Jewelry, we have the best gift wrapping service in the Seven Nations. Now just give me a moment, and I'll let the boss know. You can go see her whenever you require that box. Great! Paimon Sugar Frosted Slime now comes in a beautiful package! from your store. Uncle Mung already told me about it. Thank you both for saving him. Many of the best goods in our store were found by Uncle Mung. If anything were to happen to him, it would be impossible for us to continue doing business. Here, this container is itself an antique with at least 140 years of history. It's already been cleaned. Will it do? Yep, 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 it's great. 
Hang on a moment. Could we borrow one other thing? Sure. Please help yourselves. As long as it's on our shelves. Traveler, this clay pot looks really awesome. If we use an antique as our mixing bowl, we should be able to make a great snack. It's done! The one and only sugar-frosted slime! Carefully now. Into the box it goes and dust it over with a bit more powdered sugar. <clears throat> oh, yes. You might want to use these two freshly picked flowers as decorations, too. Woohoo! It looks beautiful! Great! Now that we've put all that we've got into this box, let's go to the Jade Chamber to see Mingguang. ¿Qué le ha pasado? Que se ha caído el culo. May darken According to Kuching, this is what we should say. Excuse me, do you sell the moon here? Yes. How many would you like? It's not convenient to speak of numbers here. Ah, well said. Please, use this to ascend to the chamber. Ah, uh, yes. Speaking of which, are you two the guests that Lady Ningguang has arranged to meet with today? Yep. And yet the code they used was not the one for guests, but for the Yuhang. What's going on here? I've been waiting for you, returnee from Joyen Karst. <gasps> it's Ningguang! Since this is our first meeting, um, we've prepared a gift. I hope you like it. Oh, for me. You have my thanks. It seems that I have made things difficult for you, considering that you were supposed to be my guests. <laughs> oh no, it's nothing. <laughs> I'm glad you like it, too. This palace floats in the skies, higher than the peak of any mountain. From this vantage point, one may survey all of Liyue. I have been gathering the funds necessary to build it from the time I began learning the merchant's craft. And since becoming the Tianchuan, I have spared no effort in hiring the best craftsmen to constantly extend it. At first, it was but the size of one room. Now, it is large enough to blot out the moon in the skies above Liyue. One day, I believe it will overshadow all seven nations. Not many from outside Liyue earn the right to ascend to the Jade Chamber. But I have been in correspondence with the acting Grand Master of the Knights of Favonius, <clears throat> who spoke highly of you. As such, I have been putting eyes and ears out ever since you reached Liyue. What? And I finally got wind of your movements when you were on the way to Wangshu Inn. Uh, 
Wait! Was Virgildet one of your people? <laughs> Just Virgildet? No. Everyone at Wangshu Inn is one of ours. <laughs> hmm. At the Guizhang Ballista, yes? Uh, you weren't peeking on us from the skies the whole time, were you? <laughs> I fear that peeking would have been a little difficult from this altitude. Our eyes and ears are more than sufficient. You two are very interesting people, after all. It would be natural to take an interest. Well, I wouldn't expect you to trust us, considering that you have had far more interactions with the Adepti. The reason I invited you here was to clear up some misunderstandings. I believe that you've heard of the Archon War. Many gods used to walk this earth, and many long wars were fought between them that did not abate until 2,000 years ago. Much blood was shed, and many lives were lost. In the end, only seven victors remained standing in Tevat. They built cities and nations on the corpses of the vanquished, and thus began the era of the Seven. You can see Goyun Stone Forest from here, I trust. It is no natural rock formation. Those are giant spears of rock hurled by Rex Lapis during the war. Beneath the spears lie those cast down by Rex Lapis in those days, gods that failed to seize the title of Archon. Not only is it true that gods may die, but so too has the membership of the Seven changed over the last two millennia. Rex Lapis's passing is an unimaginable disaster for Liyue, but the Order of the Seven will not collapse simply because of that. Another Lord of Geo will arise sooner or later, yet how are we to forget Rex Lapis? When that time comes, the relationship between the people of Liyue and the gods and Adepti will surely be different from before. Even in a new era, the Liyue Qixing remain Rex Lapis's former subjects, do you really think us capable of having played a part in his demise? Of lacking the foresight to see the certain repercussions? <laughs> that day at Yujing Terrace, it was also very sudden. Even I was caught completely off guard. You were there, you no doubt saw. But our enemy has long lain hidden within the harbor. If we do not act against them now, they will surely gain the upper hand. Hiding the Exuvia was a necessary maneuver to take the initiative back, to play the spider while our foes scurry about. But who's this enemy you're talking about? What do you think, Traveler? Huh? What are you two talking about? Well answered. Uh, huh? <sighs> The scenery out here is fine indeed, but the wind is a little strong. Our preparations to receive guests within are complete. So please, this way. Dani Dex, gracias por seguirme. Se agradece un montón, tío. you two. Make yourselves at home if you wish. Can we really? I have invited you two here as friends. And when friends come over to play, our enjoyment comes first. Natural. Whoa! Isn't this that legendary wall? 
Why, you've kept your ear to the ground, I see. That's because even the storytellers are talking about it. Everyone's after a piece of paper from that wall. It's super famous. That's because that wall records Leo's secrets. Merchants have always been attracted to secrets. But the secrets of the mercantile world are of no interest to you, are they, Traveler? You're rather special, really, and I think you're quite aware of that. If possible, I'd like to have your trust. But if you were to choose the more trustworthy person between myself and Kuching... <laughs> You'd pick Kuching? Nah, I had a feeling. I originally thought her a bit too hard-headed. With someone of her character on the Chising, I've had some <clears throat> extra messes to clean up behind the scenes. But after she said those words, the time of the Adepti has long passed. If even the Liyue Chising don't want to face that truth, then what future is there for Liyue? Well, I must say that quite a few of my doubts have been dispelled. I won't deny that Rex Lapis's passing seems advantageous to us. But, for Liyue's sake, we cannot allow ourselves to be shackled by rumors of our usurpation of power. Indeed. It seems that you understood what I meant to say from the very beginning. I called for the gag order and for the Exuvia to be hidden to temporarily stabilize the situation, and also to prevent something similar to the incident in Mondstadt. With Rex Lapis's death, the Fatui have busied themselves with many clandestine actions beyond their diplomatic remit. As the Tianchuan, one responsible for Liyue, I cannot be too concerned with appearances when opposing them. Allowing the rite of parting to take place was also meant to buy some time for us to take control of Liyue's administration. <sighs> it's exactly as Zhongli said. The Qixing only provided the venue for the rite so they could use us for their own ends. Wait, that's right. Speaking of ends, could I say one other thing? Of course. Byman's heard that anyone who sends a greeting gift gets a little something in return. So, does that include us? <laughs> it's all right. I like direct people. Well, we have made quite a bit of trouble for you recently. How about this? You can pick any one object here as you please, and you may take it with you. Yay! Paima I was just waiting for you to say that! Let's see, what should we get? <gasps> one of the sheets on that wall! Don't look at Paimon like that! One of these sheets of paper will sell for crazy prices, even if it's only as large as Paimon's fingernail! Just imagine! How much more a whole untorn sheet would sell for? Let's grab one! The biggest one! Huh? Well, that was an easy search. The biggest sheet is right up there in the most obvious spot. Let's go with that one! La 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 la. Let's see what's written on it. <clears throat> huh? There's a place marked with a circle on here. Oh, could it be treasure? Whatever it is, it better make us filthy rich. Let's see what's written over here. Sigil of permission, something, something, fatui, research, copy. Huh? Aw, oh, that doesn't sound like treasure at all. Oh, this piece of paper shows that a chasing spy discovered traces of classified Fatui research on the sigil of permission. Oh, Ningguang did say that the Fatui have been up to all kinds of mischief in the shadows of Liyue. Spreading rumors, wanting to get their hands on the Archon's body and whatnot. But research on the sigil of permission? Paima wonders what they're up to. Speaking of which, there's also some connection between you and the Sigil of Permission. Seems there's still more for us to find out. Oh, you really think so? Well, should we not go then? Oh, so you're saying that it's precisely because we can't completely trust Ningguang that we should confirm the truth of what she says for ourselves. Hmm. 
That's way out of Paimon's league. Paimon thinks she's been nothing but good to us. Mm, anyway, we'll see if you're onto something. Um, before we look for Zhongli at Dihua Marsh, let's go to the place marked out on these papers and see if the Fatui really are up to no good there. <laughs> One more. I just came up with an awesome new riff. Want to hear it? There's fire in your soul, you gotta rock and roll! Rock so and come roll. on, let's get moving! Rock and roll! Toma. No me va a tener jodido, eh. Yo creo que debería cambiarme de... No tengo ninguna tarjeta, en serio, tío. Ni una. Vale. 
Ahora, eso lo hace mucho más rápido. A ver, espera, 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 espera. for a little shock. Voy a poner...
Voy a usar este. Voy a probar con este, ya voy. No sé yo si voy a poder, eh. de la caída, tío. A ver, porque esto no curula. A ver. Necesito Aplea Max Wish me luck. A Bárbara A esta. Here, let me help you Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Oh, you're taking me out? Vamos. Vamos a ver si sí puedo.
Vale. <clears throat> Frozen crisp. No, pero vamos a ver si he cogido. Madre mía, el viaje me ha metido, loco. Me mata, tío. No puedo, eh. A ver.
documents here. And some stacks of blank paper, too. Hmm. What are they for? Paimon's seen this pattern before. But where? Oh, Paimon knows! It looks just like the sigil of permission the child gave you. Hmm. But how did a relic of the Adept die end up in the hands of someone like Child? Suspicious. Oh, that's right. Cloud Retainer said that when the Lord of Geo created the Sigil of Permission, it wasn't to be used as some old relic. Talismans like that were once used in the Archon War to channel divine powers. Maybe the Fatui are copying the Sigil of Permission in hopes of achieving a similar effect. Being able to channel divine power in battle? Whew, that sounds pretty dangerous. And the plot thickens. We'll need to keep an eye on Child, that's for sure. Hmm, alright, that's enough sticking around here. We gotta go meet up with Zhang Li soon. The last stop on our Rite of Parting Preparations Tour is Dihua Marsh! Let's go! Paimon hates being late! Right on time. I myself only arrived moments ago. Did you enjoy your visit to the Jade Chamber? It was so big and pretty and expensive. Paimon's never seen such a fancy schmancy place before. Indeed. It's second to none in all of Liyue. Then you met with Ningguang, I trust? What did you talk about with her? She's Super rich and so generous. Oh, Paimon thinks she's very friendly. Yeah, her take on Ningguang is quite different from Paimon's. She thinks that even the tactless Yu Hung is more trustworthy than her. Oh, so you also met with Kuching then? What did she have to say? She said the time of the Adepti has long passed. If even the Liyue Qixing don't want to face that truth, then what future is there for Liyue? <laughs> no respect for the Divine. Indeed, contrary to the Everbold Kuching, Ningguang is more of a businesswoman at heart. Though they are both members of the Qixing. Although she's friendly, there's no way of clearly discerning her true intentions. Yes. She has only relied on herself to rise to her current position. No ordinary person could ever achieve that. It's said that she's the one behind the constant expansion of the Jade Chamber. It's the second most important thing to her. Even if she ever gave up the position of Tianxuan, she would never give up the Jade Chamber. The Jade Chamber is only second? What's the most important thing to her then? Why, Mora? Of course. All Ningguang talked about was the Fatui this and the Fatui that. She said that after Rex Lapis was murdered, the Fatui have constantly been trying to sink their fingers into Liyue and that they aren't to be trusted. That is how the Fatui have always been. It doesn't surprise me in the least. Hmm. No matter what they may be planning, you must be careful when dealing with the Fatui. Always be on your guard. So, is there anything we need to get for the Rite of Parting in Diyua Marsh? Yes, as a matter of fact, there is. Today, we'll be gathering wild glaze lilies. Glaze lilies? But well, why did we come all the way out here? Doesn't the garden in Yujing Terrace have some? 
Even Chingsa Village has glaze lilies. Oh, right. Paima remembers that Madame Ping is always tending to flowers. Maybe we could ask her. No. Those lilies have all been gardened by people. They won't do at all. Dihua Marsh used to be full of glaze lilies. It is a sort of joyful flower that listens to human song. Before the Archon War, Dihua Marsh was all dry land and fertile soil. But the war caused landslides, and the land was flooded, turning it into the marsh you see now. Nearly all the glazed lilies were wiped out. Of course, there are some kinds of flowers that have been preserved and gardened by people in the city. But very few people know that glazed lilies may still be found in the wild. Wild glazed lilies have the strongest fragrance. If we want to follow the true tradition of the rite of parting, we must grind up the wild lilies and place the powder in a censer of everlasting incense. But I'll need your assistance in gathering these flowers. No, I need you to sing to them. Singing to the flowers will make them more fragrant. Ah, uh, so how good is your singing? Really? Why doesn't Paimon believe you? We'll only know once she starts singing. Whenever you're ready. Da 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 da. What happened? These flowers are jumping. They look really angry. Is it because you sing a song for Monstat that they don't understand here in Lila? Good night, Shun. Power core! Oh. Protect us! Oh no! Go, Barbara, go! Tonight! 
Vengeance! This little monster is known as a whopper flower. Hmm. Strange. These petals look interesting. The glaze lilies used as a disguise were buried with the whopper flower for too long. The result seems to have surprisingly potent medicinal value. Let's collect what we can of these petals. Well, that's nice and all, but will those petals be useful for the rite of parting? Unfortunately, no. Ugh, that's so lame. Excuse me. Are you searching for glaze lilies? Oh, hey, it's... What's her face? Uh... Paimon can't remember. Hello, traveler. I'm surprised you still remember my name. Ah, oh, that reminds me. How was your visit to the Jade Chamber? Well, it sure would have been better if you told us how to get up there. Didn't I tell you the way? Surely I did. Nope. We found the way on our own. Oh, I see. Uh-oh. I guess I really did forget to tell them. Huh. Something seems a little off about Ganyu. She's acting different from the first time we met. Where's her serious attitude now? Oh, well, I met you at that time as an emissary of the Tianquan. But now, I am simply out on a stroll to see the flowers. You came all the way out here to see the flowers? Why not just enjoy the gardens of the city? <sighs> Yujing Terrace is where Rex Lapis parted from this world. If I strolled through those lonely gardens now, I wouldn't be able to bear it. Whenever my duties take me near Yujing Terrace these days, I draw the windows to block my view of the gardens. Oh, sorry. We shouldn't have brought it up. No, it's quite all right. I just haven't processed my emotions yet. When the Archon War came to its end 2,000 years ago, the first iteration of the Seven would gather in Liyue and drink with Rex Lapis. But five of those original seven had already passed before Rex Lapis. It's truly a changing of the guard. Yes. Now that the spirit of Rex Lapis has returned to the heavens, only Barbados of Mondstadt remains of the first seven. The other five, including Inazuma's Raiden Shogun, are no longer the same friends from 2,000 years ago. Of the current seven Archons, the youngest is Sumeru's god of Dendro. She is merely 500 years old, whereas Rex Lapis was more than 6,000 years old at the time of his passing. This means that Liyue had been under Rex Lapis's rule from the moment it was first founded 3,700 years ago. The city has never had to bid farewell to its deity. So what do you think of this... farewell? Huh? This... This is a little sudden. I... <sighs> As a mortal, I've never dared to imagine a Leo out without Rex Lapis. But as an Adeptus, I think I will eventually come to grips with reality. Since Rex Lapis has passed, the time of Leo's contract with the gods and Adepti has now reached its end. Huh? Did you just say, as an Adeptus? Yes, I... I am a mix of human and Chilean. Adeptus blood flows through my veins. I fought for Rex Lapis and the city of Liyue during the Archon War. After the war ended, I signed a contract with Rex Lapis and took the position as secretary for the Chising. I've continued those duties to this very day. Oh. 
Well, uh, let's save that conversation for another day. You say that you are here looking for glaze lilies? I also know where wild glaze lilies can be found. See, I've just picked one myself. Here, you may have it if you wish. <laughs> we dare not refuse it. Oh, so did you sing a song before you picked the lily? Indeed, I did. I know this tradition well. In fact, I sang a local Leo a ballad to it. Wow, so you really know your stuff, too. Thanks, Ganyu. No, it is you who I should be thanking. If not for this chance meeting, I never thought that I would be able to contribute to the upcoming farewell for our ancient lord. If you would excuse me, I should return to my work now. Good luck. Good luck. And that just about does it. Our preparations for the rite of parting are mostly finished. Given the ease of picking glaze lilies, I think this was a fitting end to our tasks. In more ways. Yeah, Paimon can already imagine him starting a business in Liyue. <laughs> I've had enough ventures in my life already. Beginning a new undertaking is always difficult at first, and requires no small amount of effort. And once business is at full steam, the stress of it all only wears away at you over time. So you must be careful to take the time to step back and re-examine yourself. If left unchecked, the wear and tear on your heart may go well past mending. Wow. See? Jolly sounds like he's already seen it all. Alright, I think it's about time we head back to Leo at Harbor now. You're the consultant to Wongsheng Funeral Parlor. Mr. Zhongli, I presume. The Millilith are watching our every move now. These are desperate times. We mustn't act rashly. Desperate times? The Adepti of Joyun Karst are finally on the move. Do they intend to exercise force? Most likely. I've heard that some members of the Qixing have already gone to meet them. Well, I say meet, but it's more like they're attempting to stall the Adepti outside the city. However, both sides were quite obstinate, and hit an impasse. It seems inevitable, given the current situation. The Adepti do not acknowledge the Chi Sing. They only acknowledge the contracts Ooh. of the Geo Archon. If the two sides come to blows, Liyue Harbor will be in no position to stop them. Surely the Liyue Chi Sing are not the sort to give in so easily. <laughs> Their boneheadedness is known throughout the lands. Yet, it's because of that obstinacy that mortals and Adepti are now on the verge of conflict. And what now? How is it that the Fatui have come under fire? Ah, <sighs> that's all Ningguang's doing. She proclaimed that in these tumultuous times, the Millilith must rein in the actions of the Fatui. Only now do they want to start keeping tabs on us? <laughs> that's the chi -sing for you. Anyway, Mr. Zhongli, you're one of Child's close associates. Please understand that your actions will reflect on us. Don't let anyone catch you off guard. It looks like things are about to boil over in Liyue Harbor. Do you intend to use your neutral identity as an intermediary between both sides? Or will you use your sword to turn the balance? Neither path is an easy one. Oh, by the way, Mr. Zhongli, we've heard that the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor has also been caught up in all of this. They're currently squaring off with the authorities at the gates. Things are taking a turn for the worse. I'm afraid I must leave now to handle things back at Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. I hope that Master Hu has been able to keep things under control for the moment. Consider your next course of action carefully, Traveler. If you're trying to prevent an explosion, 
It may be wisest to look for the fuse first. <sighs> Having connections with the Fatui seems to be quite the double-edged sword. So what does Xiangli mean by looking for the fuse? Oh, Paimon gets it! If there's anyone that wants to see the whole city turned upside down, it's definitely him! He must be waiting for the moment when no one is watching to do something really bad! But where could we find him now? Where would he go at a time like this? <coughs> tengo que ver a ver porque tengo que mejorar a Lloyd Canjear por... Por este lado. No quiere ni a Zuma. Y a Rech. Vale. Todo esto, una cosa. Sí. Wow. This is 
the golden house? It looked impressive enough from the outside, but who would have guessed that it was even fancier on the inside? And so full of Mora. This is where all of Tabat's Mora is minted, right? In that case, maybe they won't notice if a few more go missing. Oh, so it's a trap! Tricky, tricky. Good thing Paimon's got you here. But even if we can't take any, we can still have a closer look, right? Or better yet, take a nap on top of a mountain of Mora! It's like a dream come true! Oh, right! Back to business. It's quiet. Too quiet. Surely someone's gotta be guarding something as important as the Exuvia. Huh? Look! What happened here? Uh-oh. Paimon smells trouble. Quick! We have to go make sure that the Exuvia is alright. You've already fulfilled your task as guides, so why do you still linger here? Haven't you already seen enough trouble for today? Huh? Who's there? <sighs> if you were Fatui, I imagine that you would be entitled to a generous reward from the Tsaritsa herself. <coughs> but now, you're nothing but dross, and you're in my way. Hmm, where should I start? Well, I've never been one to beat around the bush, you know. But who could have possibly guessed that the god of Geo would mysteriously perish the very moment I arrived in Liyue, and that the Exuvia would subsequently be hidden away? If it weren't for that lovely little rite of parting ceremony you put together, it would have taken me a whole lot longer to get the information I needed. <laughs> Stopping the more immense, hiding away the Exuvia. <laughs> the Chising are really pulling out all the stops this time. So you've been planning to take the Gnosis from inside the Exuvia all along? Huh. As one of the eleven Fatui Harbingers, it's my duty to see the will of the Tsaritsa fulfilled. She will get that which she desires. <laughs> I'm not asking for your blessing, and there's nothing you can do to stop me anyway. The time for discussion and diplomacy has already passed. I mean, if it were up to me, I would have skipped that stage to begin with. But I'm willing to do as the Tsaritsa deems fit. Either way, we now come to my favorite part. A simple pleasure, and one that I am oh so delighted to be sharing with you. The battle. Battle? So you're the type that goes looking for trouble, huh? <laughs> you could say that. When Signora offended the deities outside the cathedral in Mondstadt, she swiftly left the scene once her mission was accomplished. Instead of confronting you directly, she chose to rely on the snow and ice to make her escape. She wouldn't want the knights to come running towards the sound of battle now, would she? When she faces a worthy opponent, she will prioritize her mission, weigh the outcomes, and consider the consequences of her actions. But as for me, the greatest pleasure of being a Harbinger lies in crossing blades with strong opponents. We won't let what happened in Mondstadt ever happen again! Oh, so you intend to fight me? Good. I won't kill you, Traveler. I'll just play along, to feel the thrill of battle. Besides, you could never defeat me, not even in your wildest dreams. But hey, try to relish the fight anyway. Because if you... <laughs> Fighting talk, I love it! Now let's see you live up to it. This chance is hard to come by, so show me all you've got! So very few ever get the chance to square off with a Fatui Harbinger. So come now, amuse me, and don't you dare disappoint! 
No voy a poder hacerlo porque se me ha muerto el sal demasiado rápido, tío. muerto demasiado rápido no so quick to flee crew that silver oh. didn't make it to the mira lo que le quedaba tío iba de puta madre si no si no se... Si no se me llegan a morir esa antes, tío, si lo hago. A ver, un momento. Tengo que, que, que llevar mucho cuidado con las dos que curan. Si se me mueren esas dos no puedo. Las otras, las otras dos van bien.
You've already fulfilled your task. Huh? Who's there? <sighs> if you were Fatui, I imagine that you would be entitled to a generous reward from the Tsaritsa herself. But now, you're nothing but... Hmm, where sh If it weren't for that lovely... <laughs> stopping the... So you've been planning to... <laughs> As one of the- She will get that which she desires. <laughs> I'm not at the time for discussion and de- Either way, when- The battle. Battle? So you- <laughs> You- <laughs> When sin- Instead of confronting you direct- When she faces a worthy- But as for me- We won't let what happened in- <laughs> Oh, so you intend to fight me? Good. I won't kill you, Traveler. I'll just play along. To feel the thrill of- Besides- you could never <laughs> fighting talk. I love it. I love it. This chance is hard to come by, so show me all you've got. So very few ever get the chance to square off with a Fatui Harbinger. So come now, amuse me, and don't you dare disappoint. <laughs> Poor timing. Cowering already? Poor timing. No, 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 To a Voyager! Try this. Passable effort. Run all you like. I'll protect us. I must leave no stone unturned. A clear shot. Poor timing. Wide open. I still got some kick. Pyrotechnic. Let's dance. Cowering already. <laughs> Leave it all to me. Celestial Voyager. Someone needs assistance. Not bad, not bad. Guess I should take you more seriously. <laughs> Good. Venga, en serio, tío. Me jodas, tío. Estaba muerto ya. Well, that just means I can go all out. Brace yourself. This is about to get tough. Now, show me what you can do against the might of a harbinger. This. I 
must leave no stone unturned. No use hiding back there! All you do is run! Got you! I'll crush you! You've got some skills. Leave it all to me. No use mm -hmm. hiding back there. All you do is run. I must leave no stone unturned. This. Toma. ¿Has visto como sí, cojones? Not bad. Your swordsmanship is quite impressive. But that's about as far as you'll get. <laughs> Didn't think you had that card hidden up your sleeve. You were just playing us to get close to the Exuvia! Oh, quiet down. Stop acting like some wide-eyed recruit. You've seen this world. You of all people should know. This should have been expected! Well then, I'll be taking Morax's Gnosis now! Huh? <laughs> I see. Well, this is most unexpected. You... You beat me to it, didn't you? Leave it all 
<clears throat> Die here. Someone needs assistance. <laughs> Let the show begin. Hey. Die here. I'll protect us. I must leave no stone unturned. Die here. No puede ser verdad, tío. Wow, I'm Die here. Now they need me. 
mierda, tío. Joder, ahora sí que la ha tomado. Die here. Que como se me muera esa, entonces sí que estoy listo, eh. Seems the burden of the foul legacy transformation was too great for my body. I lacked the opportunity to think this through. And now that I consider the matter more carefully, you never had any chance of beating me to the Gnosis. You had no connection to the Gnosis, no matter where it had been taken. That's what we've been trying to tell you. We didn't take it. Your show of ability today far surpasses that of Senora's initial assessment of you and Mondstadt. Tell me, how could that be? You already know the answer, don't you? I can see it in your eyes. But if that <clears> is a <throat> secret you wish to keep, I guess I'll just have to curb my curiosity. This battle has already left me satisfied. Anyone who strives as I do to grow stronger shall be called a friend. Even if our friendship can only be shown in battle against one another. Pretty sure that's not the normal way to make friends. <laughs> Unfortunately... I must bring this amiable conversation to an end. My quest still beckons. Given that the Gnosis wasn't taken by anyone, then we must look once again to the beginning. Perhaps it was never in the Exuvia to begin with. In fact, it might be that the Exuvia was just a diversion of sorts. What? So you mean that... Yes, it appears so. Interesting to say the least. It seems that the guardian deity of the capital of commerce is also well versed in little maneuvers beyond the boundaries of contracts. As such, we must now look to our backup plan. Backup plan? I had hoped it would never come to this, for the weak will be swept away in the process. The truth is, the world belongs to those who pursue strength. I seldom willingly involve myself with the weak. Unfortunately, we cannot be picky about our methods as Fatui Harbingers. Children must all learn to eat their vegetables sometime. So what are you planning to do? I will awaken the god that lies dormant beneath Guyan's stone forest. A god? Osile, overlord of the Vortex, who was defeated by Morax, the Geo Archon in the Archon War, and who has remained pinned beneath the waves by the Geo Archon's stone spears ever since. If such an ancient god would be unleashed upon Liu Harbor, defenseless without the protection of its deity, do you think the cunning Rex Lapis would just stand aloof and watch the ensuing destruction? But the Archon War ended 2,000 years ago! How can an ancient god appear in a world now overseen by the Seven? Simple. I've already prepared the means to awaken it. Hey! Those are sigils of permission! Oh, Paimon remembers now! The Fatui have been researching them! Indeed. The one that was given to you was just a byproduct of our research. With the power of so many sigils of permission concentrated in one place, along with that which was bestowed upon me as a harbinger by our Tsaritsa, breaking the subduing might of the Geo Archon Spears for a time should be no obstacle. Using the powers of ancient gods in such a situation fails to interest me, and is largely against my principles. But knowing that such an action will not only force the Geo Archon to show its hand, but you as well, that makes matters a little more intriguing. Ha <laughs> ha 
Let's see. Will the nation that has lost its deity be swallowed up by an ancient malice once more? If you wish to drown together with the people of Nia, you're free to stay and enjoy the show. <laughs> Just as we came out of the Golden House, we really wouldn't have known which way to go. <sighs> Did we make it in time? Is the Overlord of the Vortex still in the sea? It hasn't destroyed Leila yet, has it? What are you doing here? Huh? Hold on! It's the Adepti! What are you doing on the Jade Chamber? Paimon thought you were arguing with the chi -Sing. Is the fighting over? Faced with a calamity of such magnitude, we have agreed to put our differences aside for now and unite against this common enemy. <laughs> oh, Paimon gets it. So how do you plan to defend Leela? <laughs> Just seeing this Overlord of the Vortex guy puts a pit in Paimon's tummy, even from all the way out here. It's not just you. We've got new Millilith recruits who can't even stand at attention without shaking. The force of an ancient god's presence seems to be too much for ordinary people to handle. Which is why we must stop that monster before it gets any closer to Liyu Harbor. So the Archon War was fought 2,000 years ago against enemies like that thing? Now that's scary. <sighs> So will the power of the Chi-Sing, Millilith, and Adepti gathered here be enough to stop that god? We've already discussed this together, and our conclusion is... not necessarily. What? But all of you are supposed to be the Guardians of Lilith! Can't you think of something? One certainly could. Huh? The Chi Sing did once research the matter of the Guizhong Ballista when it piqued their fancy. And as fate would have it, one who did craft the Guizhong Ballista with one's own hands is here. For what could you mortals ever learn of Adepti mechanisms? Yet it would take one but a little tinkering to turn this Ballista into an engine of war beyond your wildest thoughts. <laughs> I suppose this is one blessing from the Adepti that we should be thankful for. So be it. We shall use the upgraded Guizhong Ballista to fight off that god. All the Adepti here can lend their strength to Mammoth. We haven't a moment to spare. Our battle begins now. Yep. This should be 
fun. My work. Leave it all to me. Finished. Como la protejo, tío. Child, you are strong in body and spirit. Perhaps you can withstand three forms of adeptal energy at once. This will hurt a little. Please bear with us. Once you've adapted, try to use them in battle. Worse to come, right? Look at me. 
Pero si a ese le quedaba todavía le quedaba. Y yo iba sobrado. <coughs> Clouds may darken According to Kuching, this is what we should say. Excuse me, do you sell the moon here? Como? Yes. How many would you like? It's not convenient to speak of numbers here. Ah, well said. Please, use this to ascend to the ch- Yep! And yet the code they used was not the- Como? Ah. Paimon's ex- If we hadn't happened to see- oh, Do we- What are you- Huh? Hold on! It's the- Faced with the calamity of- <laughs> Oh, Paimon gets- it. Eh, just- It's not just you. Which is why we must stop- So the Archon were- 
So will the power of the- We've already discussed this- What? One certainly could. Huh? The Chi Sing did once research the matter, and as fate would have it, for what could you mortal- <laughs> I suppose this is one blessing from the Adepti that we should be thankful for. So be it. We shall use the upgraded Guizhong Ballista to fight off that god. All the Adepti here can lend their strength to man it. We haven't a moment to spare. Our battle begins now. Yep. La verdad que la secuencia está totalmente espectacular. No lo haría. Digna de ver otra vez. Ballista. Do not let the Fatui disturb their work. All able Millilith, with me! Let's go help you! We Adepti have not faced a god in several millennia. Hmm. Let one see what you are made of then. What strength remains within you? One wishes to witness. It is a time for a break yet! Divine power. I am very familiar. Be careful not to get hit. The Fatui! Their attacks are unrelenting! <laughs> How daring. Snezhnai's diplomats will answer for this afterward. Every last one. No! Silver! Oh. <laughs> Were you about to say we can't hold them, children? Huh? Don't lose heart. Here, take this. This is... Adeptal Energy! Mierda. Vale, va. That light from your body. It's like the time in Julian Cars. Wow, it's a Madam Pink shockwave. This green is really strong. <laughs> Ready, steady, go. <laughs> Looks like I. Oh my God. <laughs> Ha! 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 
this is incredible. This quickly! With the blood of the Chilean, I guard you against evil! Cast your fear of injury by the wayside, and fight with all your might! I too did this during the Archon War! <laughs> so this is what Ganyu's like in a fight! My name means swiftness. Take my power and run as I do. We're going to fast! Spirit, uh, perhaps you can withstand three forms of adeptal energy at once. This will hurt a little. Please bear with us. Once you've adapted, try to use them in battle. Mm -hmm. This isn't good. I guess yep. this is it. Shine. Someone needs assistance. ourselves fully. Now. Mm. The Guizhong Ballista is destroyed. Huh? Without its covering fire, retaliation shall be difficult. But the Jade Chamber is our last line of defense. We can't give another inch, no matter what. I have another idea. Uh. 
What do you mean, Lady Ningguang? I'll sacrifice the Jade Chamber. What is the meaning of this? I understand. Traveler, lend me a hand. Farewell, old friend. Goodbye for now. Let us meet again in the future. The ominous aura of that monster has indeed begun to fade. The effects of the sigil of permission last but a short time. It will be some time before the Overlord of the Vortex can make any waves again. We are indebted to you for your assistance. If the Adepti hadn't happened to be here, the future of Liyua Harbor would surely have been in great jeopardy. Save your flattery. We didn't just happen to be here. Surely you won't pretend to have forgotten the reason for which we came. Come now. There's no need for such harsh words, Cloud Retainer. I've heard that when Ningguang began learning to do business, she had already started setting aside part of her then-limited income in preparation for building the Jade Chamber. At first, it was only the size of a small room. But with continued expansion, it has become the palace that lies before you now. It is a testament to Ningguang's entire life, both as a businesswoman and as the backbone of the Liyue Qixing. Seeing the Jade Chamber destroyed in the defense of Liyue means much to her. To me, such cooperation and sacrifice deserves at least some recognition, don't you agree? Well... I was really hoping you would say that such sacrifice could at least be used as some leverage in our negotiations. <laughs> Thank you all for hearing me out. We know very well why the Adepti came here today. But please forgive us. We cannot yield to your wishes. Oh? 3,700 years. According to our records, the Adepti signed a contract with Rex Lapis to protect Liyue 3,700 years ago. Even to this very day, Liyue and its lands have stood the test of time, immovable as stone, just as it was thousands of years before. This is truly no small feat. But that does not mean that the Liyue of today is the same city as it was all those years ago. Do not merely cast your protective gaze upon the land. Instead, focus your sights on our city and each of the citizens that dwell within it. Are you questioning our means of protecting Liyue? Hmm... I mean no offense. I simply hope that our Adepti forebearers would see Liyue in a new light. Ha! <laughs> forebearers, you say? One doubts you would be fit to be part of such a lineage. This morning, Rex Lapis appeared to me in a dream. What? In the dream, I yearn to tell him that we Chi Sing, though mortal, are equally bound to the contract. Each passing generation of the Chi Sing leaves many things of value to be inherited by the next generation. I also thought to tell him how the past generations of Chi Sing had strove under his rule to survive in our mortal world, establishing a network of contracts which has since come to be known as trade. But I dared not speak. I could only gaze at him in silence until the moment I awoke. Oh, Ningguang. Yet another perspective. What are you trying to say, Outlander? Right! 
Right. That's something that happened in Mondstadt. It's a story about the Four Winds and the people of the Animal Archon. The Animal Archon sought to quell the strife between the two sides, because he believed that such conflict would only scar the hearts of both, and that nothing good would come of it. Each of the Seven Nations has its own scars from the past. Though your point is the very height of simplicity, as Adepti, we've become a laughingstock to be chastised thus by an outlander who has lent us such succor. All right, all right. Didn't Ning Wong suggest that we should focus on the city and each of its citizens? I know I already have, so why not see for yourselves? I apologize for appearing in full armor. I am afraid I cannot show the proper courtesies. And who are you? I am Feng Yan, a sergeant of the Millilith. I have come to extend my thanks to the Adepti. I thought this battle would perhaps be my last. But thanks to the aid of the Adepti, our forces were not as badly battered as I feared we might be. Although I am a mere mortal soldier, I promise to hold the line and never betray the grace given to us by the illuminated Adepti this day. Hmm. <laughs> huh? Why does everyone look so down? Didn't we just beat that big monster? <laughs> Weren't you frightened, dear? It was quite the predicament. I wasn't afraid. All the strong Millilith guards were there, and those powerful heroes with their visions were there. Everyone was there. When danger is near, everyone always protects me. And the rest of the time, they make fun toys and tasty snacks and... and loads of things that make the harbor so pretty. Thanks for protecting Liyue Harbor. Please, come visit us for the next Lantern Rite! Unfortunately, we wouldn't be able to participate. Huh? Because we are Adepti. Oh, okay. It must be hard being an Adeptus. Oh. You see, this is what Liyue is like today. The Country of Contracts is grateful to the Adepti for their protection, but it is no longer necessary for the city to rely on the Adepti's power to solve every little niggling matter. Although their blood is weak, there is still strength to be found in those we call mortals. The time of contracts between gods and Liyue has long since passed. Now is the time of contracts between Liyue and its people. Hmm. Seeing the port around us now, it is hard not to feel a bit out of place. Wouldn't you say so, Cloud Retainer? Your line of inquiry is askew. One did not spearhead this expedition to Liyue Harbor. Hmm. Seems like the Adepti have had a change of heart. Let us return now. Eager to leave, conqueror of demons. <laughs> yes, one understands what the conqueror of demons means. The city of Liyue has changed much after our long separation. One fears that by the time one finally grasps the new contracts of Liyue, you humans would have once again changed the place beyond recognition. Fair enough. Away we shall, and return whence we came. <sighs> Since we Adepti have consensus, then one shall persist no further. But how will we ensure that the Liyue Chising will not simply exploit their power once we depart? In my view, that is still a thing to be guarded against. <laughs> All right, Moon Carver, you needn't worry. It seems to me that this right of supervision is best left to the people of Liyue. <sighs> Looks like the conflict between humans and Adepti was avoided. All swell it ends well, huh? Oh, right! It's nice that we've got peace and all, but we're forgetting one thing. Child wanted to unleash the god so he could lure Rex Lapis out. But we were able to handle the Overlord of the Vortex on our own. 
until Rex Lapis never showed up. Oh, and speaking of that, don't we still need to get to the bottom of that Archon's death too? Hyman doesn't get it. But isn't the strongest lead we have the Adeptilus Rite of Parting that we're organizing? No idea where Zhang Li's going. Let's ask for him at Wang Shen Funeral Parlor. <laughs> Too muggy nagging. Uh, Pero... Ah, bueno, es verdad, es lo que... Lo que he seleccionado antes. Is there anything I can do for you two? I'm afraid that Wangsheng Funeral Parlor isn't in the best state to receive guests. We've come to see Zhang Li. Could you please tell him we're here? Unfortunately, Zhang Li isn't here at the moment. It seems he went to Northland Bank. Doesn't the Northland Bank belong to the Fatui? Last time we saw Zhang Li was before we went to the Golden House. Do you think he doesn't know about the attack on Liyue? Visiting the Fatui at a time like this could only mean more trouble. We had better go and make sure that everything is okay. Tengo dos mil dos. Mira, tengo, está aquí que ahí no me acordaba, tío. Tengo seis. Si sí, tengo seis. A ver un momento, la tienda. Thank <laughs> you. 
A ver. No sabía que tenía seis. Juego con pad 12. Ah, pues mira. 12 más 6, 18. A ver. Y son 10. Voy a hacer una tirada. Así pilla nobile. Pero es que sale también la otra, ¿eh? Me puede salir la... La esa también, ¿eh? Y me quedo con 8. Este es el permanente, que sale Kiki. La que chingo, no mola. Es que no me mola mucho este, tío. No me esperaba. No me mola mucho este. Será bueno, pero... No me mola mucho. Yo me esperaba, ¿eh? A otra. Y la novela ya la tengo. Y aquí... Esto es permanente. Tampoco se va a quitar. Yo me esperaba el siguiente. Voy a esperar el siguiente, ¿eh? Yo creo que sí, ¿eh? Sinceramente, vamos a esperar al siguiente. Arriba. Feel free to take a look around. Thank you. New stock at Sigo Antiques. Bueno, la verdad que esa de esa de blanco mola mucho. Mucho, pero no sé, tío. ¿Dónde está? Esa planta. Pero el banco no era aquí. Me acuerdo yo que estuve hablando con la con la tía esa del banco. Era ahí, claro. Yo me esperaba. Sinceramente. You call this cooperation between harbingers. Cooperation involves communication, you know. You know? <laughs> Don't take oh, it wow. to heart, child. Besides, aren't you happy that you got to skip the formalities and bring chaos to the land? Señora. I'm sure you must have enjoyed that. Oh, it seems that some of your friends have arrived. Hey! It's Zhang Li and Child! And... You! You're also one of the Harbingers? 
It's you two. I believe we've met once before. In the city of Bards, was it? I'm glad you still remember my name. Ah, right. I imagine that it must have been rather hard to forget watching helplessly as something precious was snatched away from your friend. Well, if it isn't you two. This is our first time seeing each other since Liyue was nearly wiped off the map. This is certainly a bit... awkward, wouldn't you say? Hmm. Paimon knew that we should never have trusted a Fatui Harbinger. Oh, now don't say that. Sure, I may have misled you, but I never had anything against you personally. Besides, I thought we were getting along quite well together, didn't you? Except for that little tussle we had at the end. <laughs> Nothing personal. We just have different views, that's all. Of course, you may very well hold this against me, but that's up to you. The real deceivers here are Senora and Zhongli. Curse them for leading me on. So actually, I think... Stop wasting time, child. There'll be plenty of time to chat once I'm through here. You remember the agreement, Morax. Now, if you would be so kind. The Gnosis, please. What in the world are you talking about? <sighs> the contract is fulfilled. That which thou seeketh is now bestowed unto thee. For my promise is solid as stone. <sighs> How sanctimonious. What? So you're the Lord of Chiyo? No, wait. That's an exciting twist and all, but why give the Gnosis to the Fatui? I do not give it for free. I give it as agreed upon in the contract, for it is a matter solely between the Tsaritsa and I. Yeah, you don't think you went a little bit too far with that whole fake death thing? Everyone was preparing the ceremony for you and splat! This big dragon falls out of the sky and all of Lyric goes into an uproar! Talk about a disaster! <laughs> Gathering all the forces that had been bubbling behind the scenes, and then stirring them together in a pot that was bound to boil over. That's what he wanted to see, am I right? Wait, what? Perhaps it's best that I explain. As you know, I've dwelt upon this world for more than 6,000 years. It is now 3,700 years ago that I founded Liyue together with the Adepti. Even boulders that can withstand whirlpools will erode with the passing of time. I kept convincing myself that cracks had not begun to form, and that the end of my time had not yet come, until one drizzly day. As I was strolling along the harbor, I heard a merchant tell one of his workers, You finished your duties. Go ahead and call it a day. I stood motionless among the crowds, asking myself, Have I already finished my duties? Oh, Zhongli. But as I began to consider relinquishing my divine role, I soon discovered that many reasons still remained to not hastily depart. Was Liyue, the city I had dwelt in for so long, already prepared to enter its next age? I decided that a test was needed in order to reveal the answer. So I feigned my own death, and gathered the cast of Child, the Adepti, and the Liu Chising to play their roles together on the stage that was Liu. Indeed I was. The Gnosis which I had kept for so many years suddenly seemed to have lost its meaning. That's right. Which is why I continued to safeguard the Gnosis until now. So you mean that if the Chaos ever reached the point of no return, you would simply appear and use your divine powers to bring Lila back under control? Of course, and it would have been all too easy for him too. Just as a child quickly matures after losing their parents, so has Liu matured when faced with the death of its deity. In the end, 
The resolution to all that has transpired was even more satisfactory than I could have hoped for. Take the Adepti, for instance. Owing to their years of seclusion, they were the least informed. Yet when faced with a crisis, they commendably showed the greatest amount of restraint possible. Not only did they manage to cooperate with the Chising, but in the end, they even made efforts to understand the hearts of the people. Credit is also due to Signora, the emissary dispatched by the Cryo Archon to fulfill our contract. At my request, she kept everything she knew in strict confidence. This despite the eavesdropping ears of her colleague, Child. This meant I could remain as Zhongli, even having the chance to fulfill the age-old traditions of Liu in this mortal form. Thank you for joining me on this journey, Traveler. All of these things turned out as I had planned. There is only one thing that I had not anticipated, and that was the conduct of the Liu Qixing. I had expected them to do no more than the Adepti, to come to the defense of Liu. But when all was said and done, they seized the opportunity to supplant Liu as divine protectors, and used the subsequent power vacuum left by my death to quickly gain complete control of Liu. Huh? That doesn't sound good at all! Ha! <laughs> On the contrary. I think it is excellent. I had always feared that it was too soon for them to take over from me. And it was also that which I longed for the most. As such, this is the best parting gift anyone could have given this god of old. Hey, what about me? Doesn't anyone feel the least bit of remorse for deceiving me? You've practically kept me in the dark! <laughs> I think that thanks would be more appropriate. You certainly played no small part in all of this. Wreaking havoc and turning the city upside down. The Lord of Geo ought to thank you for your performance, if anything. If you hadn't created the pressure of a battle between mortals, a Depti, and a god, the lump of coal resting in the hands of the Geo Archon, Liu, would never have been able to become a dazzling diamond of a city. Huh? Just whose side are you on, mocking me like that? Are you itching for a fight? Be that as it may, you've come out of this as the hero of Liu. I, on the other hand, will be forever prescribed as a disturber of the peace, no? <laughs> well then, with the Gnosis in my possession, I have no use for such idle chatter. We should return to Zapolyarni Palace and seek an audience with Her Majesty, the Tsaritsa. Come, child. Ah, fine. I'll meet you there later. I'm not sharing a boat with the likes of you. <laughs> Do as you wish. Now then, is there anything else you wish to ask me? Right! As Zhongli always told us, a good trade is a fair trade. Paimon has no idea what could be a good trade for a Gnosis. Realistically speaking, there is no such thing. Huh? However, I am the god of contracts. For thousands of years, I have made countless contracts. If the deal was of no benefit, then I certainly would not be inclined to agree to it. My agreement with the Cryo Archon will be the last of my contracts as the Geo Archon. My contract to end all contracts. As for the bargaining chip that the Tsaritsa used to balance the scales, uncover that answer for yourself in your future journeys. Toma!
Well, since we're going through with this rite of parting, I guess it means that those rumors hit the nail on the head. Uh, so Rex Lapis is really... <sighs> but they didn't catch the culprit, did they? Oh, come on. Do you think that the assassin could have been a normal person? You know what I think. I don't think any of the gossip on the streets you hear from those shady types is worth anything. There's only one real possibility in my mind. I've heard that the assassin was that Fatui fellow. Youngish, pretty high in rank. I think they called him child. The Fatui? Hmm. They certainly are very suspicious. Who knows what those greedy, crooked folks... Shh! Lower your voice. If the Fatui catch you in their sights, Rex Lapis won't be around to protect you this time. You know that god from the ocean couldn't have just shown up out of nowhere. I mean, it's been 2,000 years since Rex Lapis subdued it. Yes, and to think that this happened right on the heels of the incident with Rex Lapis, too. Say, do you think the person who assassinated our lord and released that evil god might have been one and the same? Now that you mention it, that's very possible. Yes, it's very possible indeed. I mean, it all fits together. That person must have colluded with the evil god to harm Rex Lapis. Oh, that wicked, black-hearted scoundrel. Still, what sort of supernatural prowess must this person possess to be able to do such things? I have never heard of such a person in all my years. Ah, forget it. Guessing's no use to us. Look, the Millilith over there looks like he's about to make an announcement. Let's hear what the Ministry of Civil Affairs has to say first. Please be mindful. Hear ye all! The Chi Sing's words. Though a dragon soars ageless as the mountains, it too must return to dust. This is common knowledge. Gods and Adepti live glorious lives, but both light and shadow have their season. So too must they face divinely appointed trials. Rumors and hearsay abound on the streets that Rex Lapis was murdered. Now, let the truth be revealed. Having been thwarted in his trial, Rex Lapis's soul has recouped the celestial heights. He beseeches the people of Lyra to grieve not and to let not their hearts be saddened. Nor are they to believe street-born rumors or indulge in baseless speculation. Uh, um, Daimon needs a translation on what the Chi Sing's announcement said. So that's how they're spinning it. Something feels off. Why would they suddenly give up looking for the murderer? Not to mention how this excuse sounds like something they just made up on the spot. Could the Chi-Sing already have known that Rex Lapis wasn't dead? But Zhang Li said that neither they nor the Adepti knew anything. Hmm... Did Zhang Li tell them in secret after his Gnosis changed hands? Exactly, right? Ooh, seems like the Rite of Parting has been going on for a while now. Let's go have a look. Look, it's Ningguang and Kuching. Are they saying something? Are their speeches over? As said previously, Rex Lapis's soul returning to the heavens is the end of the contract. And it is also the end of an era. 3,700 years of contracts burnt and reduced to ash. We, the people of Liyue, were indeed prosperous. But blinded by our prosperity, we forgot that time can be pitiless. The long, unending dream of our Archon walking among us. Hmm. Now that we have awoken from our dream, 
We must learn to say farewell. Will you stand with us as we reestablish our contracts? As we build a new age of prosperity? So concludes the words of Her Eminence the Tianquan. Does Her Eminence the Yuhang have anything to add? Huh? Is she looking this way? Traveler. Yikes! She really is looking our way! Is that the Traveler who they say defeated the ancient god? So young! The Liyue Qixing always repay their debts. And as you have heard, our eyes see far and our reach is long. Name your price. You deserve that much. Whoa! Well, could you help me put up some missing person posters? think I'd put my best perfume on before coming here, thinking you'd like it. But it seems as if those perfumes really were meant to be offered to Rex Lapis. Well, that's fine. Suffer no rivals in love, they say. And that's three gone in one stroke. <laughs> Ah, uh, Rex Lapis. Oh, Rex Lapis. Hmm. Now that I think about it, if everyone's of the same We're mind as me, perhaps mementos for Rex Lapis might be the best short term business opportunity. As for the mortals and Adepti of Liyue, what shape shall our relationship take from now on? Why would I not feel more at ease after laying down the burden I have borne for 3,700 years? Right. If the two of you can spare the time, I should treat you to a meal at the Shinya kiosk. Ha! <laughs> that sounds like big talk, Zhongli. Paimon might have believed you if you were treating us to some third round knockout. But you'd have to pay out your nose just to stand inside Shinyue Kiosk. Are you sure you can afford it? Hmm. You're right. I do like the Mora. But why would Morax like Mora? As the Rex Lapis Morax, I can easily create Mora. But since I have chosen to walk this earth as the mortal Zhongli, I should abide by the same rules that mortals do. When I was journeying with you, though I still had the Gnosis in hand, I knew that I must soon retire from my role as an Archon. So I had to... rehearse a little for my new life. Oh, no wonder! Paimon gets it now. You didn't look at the price tags when we were spending because you've never had to. But, since you weren't used to not being able to just make more Mora as and when you wanted to, you had to try becoming a parasite to society who lives off of other people's credit. Well, we were only spending Fatui money. You don't have to say it like that. In the City of Commerce, we do not merely exchange money or goods. We also exchange knowledge, memories and foresight as well as positions, roles, and lives. The Archon Morax 
could never experience life as the true mortal Zhongli could, no matter how many times he descended to be with his people. <laughs> I must thank you for that. I will treasure the memories that I made as Zhongli, traveling the streets of Liyue with you. That is true. But there is no journey that does not end. No meetings without partings. Hmm. Paimon thinks that we should make a move and continue our search for the Seven. I fear that continuing your journey may be difficult. The nation that neighbors Liyue by sea in Azuma is presently closed. Yes, the nation has been closed by order of its deity. The Electro Archon Ball. And just as the people of Liyue preferred to call me Rex Lapis, she too goes by another name among locals in Inazuma. Um, Paimon thinks we've heard that one before. Uh, right, Raiden? That is the case. And since Raiden is also the Shogun of Inazuma, people call her the Raiden Shogun. That said, though people at the wharf were saying that the situation in Inazuma is very tense, Paimon doesn't remember that always being the case. It wasn't that bad last year. Zhongli, since you're Rex Lapis, shouldn't you know something about what's happening there? Just how did Inazuma become a closed nation? It's because of visions. Visions? When faced with circumstances beyond their control, humans often bemoan their lack of power. But if a person shows true strength of will at a desperate and fateful moment in their life, the gods will look upon them with favor. This is what visions are. Magical foci bestowed upon those who have been acknowledged by the gods. Uh-huh. That's how people in Tevat see it. But starting from last year, the Raiden Shogun began promulgating the Vision Hunt Decree. Vision Hunt Decree? Yes. It was an order to seize all visions within Inazuma's borders, and to inlay them upon the hands of the statue of the Omnipresent God. They want to seize visions? But why? Aren't visions blessings from the gods? I should think that in the Raiden Shogun's eyes, it is precisely because they are divine blessings that they should be under the sole dominion of divinity. Whoa, that's harsh. The Animo Archon is the god of freedom, and the Geo Archon is the god of contracts. For her part, the Raiden Shogun is the god of eternity. It seems as though she has finally decided to eliminate any unstable elements that could pose a threat to her eternal realm. The fact that even I, the oldest of the seven have now passed away, will only strengthen her resolve to pursue eternity. Knowing her, she must have again quoted that adage she is most fond of when proclaiming that decree to her people. Seven ideals for seven gods. And of these, eternity is nearest unto the heavenly principles. All right then. Was there anything else you wish to know? <laughs> ah, that was a good one. Failing a divine trial. How they came up with that excuse, I will never know. That said, the reason why the Qixing were so eager to resolve the incident and stop pursuing the culprit was indeed because they received news in secret that Rex Lapis was not dead. I hinted as much to the Adepti as well. How did I accomplish that, you ask? Hmm. Have you ever heard of this particularly convenient Adepti art known as Gifting Dreams and Visions? All right then. Was there anything else you wished to know? Well then, I suppose you'll have to find a way to get inside this closed nation. Have patience. I suspect that some serendipity must first come into play.
Sí, todo está muy bien, pero en el principio habíamos empezado buscando la titira, loco. Buscando la tetera y no hemos ido a, a pasarnos en medio juego. Ah, children, come, come. <laughs> You've arrived at just the right moment. I've been looking for you. Oh, what is it, Granny? Need any help? Oh, no, no. You've done so much for Leo Harbor already. I could hardly ask for more. In fact, my old friends and I have been putting our heads together to think of what sort of gift we might give you in return. A gift? For Paimon? <laughs> oh, child. You are so very modest. Uncommonly so, even. But you mustn't decline this gift. I simply won't allow it. When you traversed my old teapot in search of the cleansing bell, I heard your little friend mention that you often camp out in the wilds. That simply won't do. Especially since I imagine you still have a very long journey ahead of you. Fortunately, I have not yet grown so old as to see my subspace creation abilities atrophy. Oh, did my friends never mention that to you? Well then, it is a blessing we old folks once received from Rex Lapis, part of our illumination, if you will. I will not go into too much detail, but subspace creation is the ability to create a small, autonomous pocket world. The teapot that you entered previously was a little trinket created using that ability. So, in the eyes of an Adeptus, creating a magic teapot world is just child's play, huh? Oh, indeed, the teapot is nothing to boast of. One such as myself must depart from this realm to create a world of one's own. Rex Lapis, on the other hand, moved mountains and seas. That is what one might call an exercise of true power. Uh, but that's it's enough nostalgia for now. The gift that I have prepared for you just requires a few final materials to add the finishing touch. That's right! Finding stuff's what we're good at, after all! Oh, settle down now, children. There's no need for you to go running hither and thither. I have already found a fleet-footed youngster to prepare what I need. What's more, I doubt that you would know how to find the materials I am searching for. Some of them are very rare indeed these days. Well... For starters, I require some shimmer soil from the banks of Dihua Marsh. Back in the day, it could only be found where the glazed lilies thrived most profusely. You would have to dig downward, following the roots of the glazed lilies. And, if you were lucky enough, you just might find a small patch of shimmer soil there. <sighs> But almost no one has been able to find Shimmer Soil in this manner since Dihua Marsh came to be the way it is today. Even more difficult to find is Smaragdus Jadeite, which must be chiseled from the rock of the chasm. Or so it used to be. Ever since the Blackcliff Forge opened for business, they've slowly but surely stripped the mines all but completely bare of it. In any case, Smaragdus Jadeite is an Adeptai treasure, 
And the adeptal power within is not something that most humans can withstand. Extended contact with it is, in fact, harmful to humans. Ah, goodness knows if that child will succeed in finding these items. Well, since you're an Adeptus, Granny, the person you asked for help, they must be an Adeptus too, right? Hmm, yes. I suppose she does count as an Adeptus. She... Cats? How come there are so many Adepti in Leela Harbor? We seem to bump into them all the time. It feels like even when you go out to eat, you could be sitting next to an Adeptus and never even know it. Oh, <laughs> maybe so. Who can say? A fair few of my old friends are rather fond of mundane mortal life, after all. I'm back, Granny. Oh, I don't believe we've met. Ah. Allow me to do the honors. This child here is Yen Fei. She's the one helping run some errands for me. Yen Fei, I believe you've already heard of the Traveler and her traveling companion. Of course, who hasn't? Much has been written about you in the Millilith's records. You became one of Liyue's most wanted after the Millilith marked you as a suspect following the incident at the Rite of Dissension. After which, you fought off the Millilith at Julian Karst and made contact with the Fatui. Before finally defeating an ancient god together with Granny and her associates, and subsequently being cleared of any and all suspicion by the Chising. <sighs> what a shame. A shame that we didn't meet sooner. If we had, well, I can't say that I would have been able to clear you of suspicion immediately, but it certainly would have been less, uh, embarrassing for you. Allow me to introduce myself once more. I'm Yenfei, a legal advisor. Got a legal problem? You can come right to me. Oh, yes, here's my business card. You'll find it has my contact details and office address. Keep it handy. If you have an urgent issue, just leave me a note at this address. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, I offer a very generous discount for first-time customers. All right, Yenfei, all right. Let's get to the business at hand. I do not think these two are in any dire need of legal assistance at the moment. You'll have to excuse Yanfei. She's always been like this, ever the talkative one when it comes to her own affairs. Paimo was gonna ask the same question. You seem really different from the ones we've met before. An Adeptus? Uh, I guess, kinda. My old man said he was one anyway. He mentioned that he once campaigned with Rex Lapis for a long old time, and then after that was all over, he went back and married my mom. They had me, and once I was all grown up, the two of them upped and left on a journey, leaving me with Granny here. Well, that's a bit casual for an Adeptus. Aren't you guys supposed to sign solemn contracts to protect Leo at Harbor and all that stuff? What do you mean he just went back to get married? Well, my dad did say that he'd talked it through with Rex Lapis and that he was fine with it. Even contributed towards the wedding gift, apparently. Anyway, let's not dwell on that too much. So, Granny, I've gotten a hold of most of the stuff you asked for, except for Smaragdus Jadeite. I couldn't find any at all. The chasm's been sealed off, and there's just no way in. Couldn't secure any documentation either. <sighs> Looks like the Ministry of Civil Affairs is serious about keeping it strictly locked down. Is that so? Hmm. But Smaragdus Jadeite is really rather essential. Yenfei, are you sure you can't find some other way? They have helped Lyra greatly, after all. It is only right that they are duly rewarded. I know, Granny, you've told me a thousand times already. Well, the chasm's definitely a no-go, but there's still a chance we can figure out some alternative means of procurement. Hmm. Hold on a moment. Let me have a look. <laughs> Whoa! That's a really thick book! What kind of things do you write in there? Commercial consultancy. Or... or... Snezhnaya... Ah! Found him! Krossel! A Snezhnayan merchant who once came to me with some legal queries on certain articles in the legal codices. If my memory serves, all of them had to do with rare ores. 
He mentioned that he was considering acquiring some Smaragdus Jadeite to make hairpins, and wanted to know if there were any legal ramifications that he should be aware of. Said he was planning to sell them in Snezhnaya. So, I guess I'll go look for him. With any luck, he'll have gotten his hands on some Smaragdus Jadeite, or might have an idea of where we can find some. Oh, you want to join me? I suppose that's no problem, but it's best if you just stand by and watch. If you try to get involved, you'll only risk placing yourself in legal jeopardy. Wow, an Adeptus imploring us to avoid incurring legal liability. Well, that's a first for sure. <laughs> best we be a little more careful than usual while we're with her. Mr. Crossel, how's business been? Oh, good, very good. All thanks to your advice, Miss Yanfei. What brings you here today? <laughs> You're too kind. I was simply doing my job. Now, I believe that the last time we met, you mentioned that you were looking to source some Smaragdus Jadeite to make hairpins. Have there been any further developments on this front? Uh, well, yes, as a matter of fact, uh, in the end I did acquire a small piece of Smaragdus Jadeite and had it fashioned into a pair of hairpins. Miss Yanfei, might I presume that you have an interest in the hairpins? I must apologize, I've already rented them out to a lady named Zhe Chiao. If you'd like to inspect them, you may have to wait quite some time. Wait, isn't Smaragdus Jadeite really rare? Aren't you worried about the hairpins getting damaged or lost while they're being rented out? No, I'm not worried in the slightest, because I signed a contract with Miss Zhe Chiao before renting them to her. The contract makes it quite clear that if she loses or damages the item in question, she must compensate me for its full original value. In return, I included a clause that guarantees the Smaragdus Jadeite is genuine, with a penalty of ten times the item's value payable by me to Miss Zhi Chiao in the event <clears throat> that it is shown to be a fake. Guaranteed genuine, with ten times the value payable if this claim is shown to be false. Yes, these terms are very clear indeed. Of course. This way both the client and I have the assurance we need. To ensure fairness, each of us has retained an original copy of the contract. In that case, might you know where Miss Zhe Chao lives? We'd like to pay her a visit and have a look at the hairpins. Oh, of course. She wrote her address down when we signed our contract. Here, I'll mark it on your map for you. Thanks a lot, Mr. Crossel. We'll be off now. Can't beat the atmosphere here. Yet there we go. <laughs> we love oh, perdón, perdón.
Nice. I'm starting to lose count. Pero que está dentro o qué? Ahí no pone que sea arriba. Eh. Ahí pone que está a esta altura. Está aquí. Ahora me pone que está arriba, tronco. Y antes no me ponía eso. Oh, whatever shall I do? Y yes, that's me. Is there something I can help you with? How do you do, Mr. Chow? We understand from Mr. Crossel that you recently rented a pair of hairpins from him. My associates and I are very interested in them. Would you mind letting us take a look at them? The hairpins? I can't lend them Vaya, to you right me now. Me I... I've lost them. I don't know how it could have happened. I always kept them right by my side and I hadn't even worn them yet. I spent so much money on them. If I have to pay their original value... There's no way I could come up with that amount of money on such short notice. I... My family is in the ore business, too. But business has been suffering ever since the chasm was sealed off. We now have a backlog of paid-up orders just sitting around. So we've been having to purchase some stock from other ore merchants to complete them. A big banquet is coming up in a few days, and several ore merchants I know of will be there. I need this opportunity to mingle and discuss prices. That's what the hairpins were for, to... Well, to keep up appearances. I can't have them looking down on me. But now that I've lost the hairpins... What will I do? Ah, why does Paimon have a sudden strong sense of deja vu? W would you really? I sent a commission to the Adventurer's Guild, but I haven't heard anything back from them yet. Hold on. Don't run off looking for the hairpins just yet. Miss Zhou Chao. Would you let me have a look at the rental contract you signed? Huh? Well, I mean, sure, I have it right here. Here you are. Let me see. Hmm... That's right! Yanfi said she's a legal advisor, didn't she? Maybe she can help Jiu Chao somehow. True. Though surely there must be a win-win solution. Right. I finished reading the contract. The terms are very clear, and they do indeed stipulate that you must pay Mr. Crossel the original value of the hairpins as compensation for the loss. Furthermore, the contract also expressly states that the amount of compensation must take current market prices into account. And given the rarity of Smaragdus Jadeite, I fear that the final amount of compensation may end up being significantly higher as a result. Even higher? Oh no... Uh-oh. Jicho looks like she's about to faint. However, all of this is assuming that it is indeed genuine Smaragdus Jadeite that was inlaid into the hairpins. Did you really have to pause before saying that part? Anyway, the hairpins are lost, so how exactly would we be able to find out if the Jadeite is genuine or not? Whichever way you look at it, we've got to start by finding those hairpins. Except that if we found the hairpins, There'd no longer be any need to check whether the Jadeite is genuine, would there? Uh... Seems right. Please... Please, I... Don't trouble yourselves over this. The fact is, I lost the item and I should pay compensation per the contract. However much it is, I will have to pay it. My family are merchants, after all. It's vital that we keep our word and respect our contracts. Now that it's come to this, I really shouldn't keep Crossel in the dark any longer. I'll go and inform him of the issue, and then... negotiate the amount of compensation. Mm, yes, legally speaking, it seems this is the most sensible course of action. But before that, I have some questions about the hairpins. So hold on a moment, Mr. Chow. 
When you first touched the hairpins, what did you feel? What did I feel? Well, I remember that the gemstones set into the pins were perfectly smooth to the touch, like the finest quality jade. My family has seen much jade pass <clears throat> through its hands in the past, so I am quite certain of my judgment in this matter. Hmm. Smooth to the touch. Finest quality jade. No, it's nothing. I just need to re-examine a few things. Let's head over to Mr. Crossel's. Ah, Miss Yanfei, you've returned. With Miss Jichiao and To, too, I see. How are the hairpins? I trust you're quite satisfied with them? Hmm. About that. But you lost them? Are you serious? Do you have any idea how expensive they were? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Truly, I am. I'll pay the compensation as per our contract. Every last Mora. Mora? <laughs> Do you have any idea what I had to go through to get my hands on that Smaragdus Jadeite? I... I just don't... <sighs> Forget it. Talking won't bring them back. Since Miss Yanfei is here, I suppose we can just have her estimate the amount that needs to be paid. No problem. But before I can give an official estimate, I'll need to do a little market research. Ah, yes. And if I may just confirm again... It was, in fact, genuine Smaragdus Jedi inlaid into the hairpins, correct? Of course! Genuine article guaranteed, or I pay back ten times the value! All right, understood. I'll conduct some market research, and once I'm back, I'll provide an official assessment of the sum owed by Mr. Chow in compensation. Please wait here, Mr. Crossel. Thank you very much. <laughs> How could she lose my hairpins? She'd better pay every last mora that they're worth. Looks like I'll have to find some way to raise that money. Please wait, Mr. Chow. I have something to discuss with you. It's not convenient to speak here, so let's find somewhere that we can sit and talk in more detail. My friend. Why do they have to give me that child's gift? Miss Yenfei, what is this about? Are you... Are you here to tell me how much I owe? No. What I wanted to talk about is, there is a chance that the Orin laid on those hairpins may not be Smaragdus Jadeite after all. What do you mean? Are you implying that you already sneaked off and found them? Obviously not. I'm no adventurer, let alone a member of the guild. I don't run thankless, time-consuming errands for a living. Let's just say I made some deductions. I don't know if Granny told you this, but Smaragdus Jadeite is found deep underground and contains very concentrated elemental energy. If mere mortals come into contact with it, well, they'll be sick in the best case. And in the worst case, they could even experience a dramatic change of personality. It most certainly would not be smooth to the touch. Mr. Chow, did you at any time feel unwell while the hairpins were in your possession? No, not at all. I felt perfectly fine the whole time. Not even the slightest bit unwell. I didn't feel anything special at all, in fact. Hmm. Now that is strange. 
I noticed earlier that there were elemental traces in Mr. Crossell's vicinity. If I have deduced correctly, he may still have the Smaragdus Jadeite in his possession. If that's the case, we should go confront him right now and expose his dirty scam right to his face! Absolutely not. If we were to confront him now, there's no way he would admit to it. Eventually, he would find some argument to compel us to leave. And then, he'd throw the Smaragdus Jadeite into the sea the moment we were gone. After that, he would simply insist that Mr. Chow pay up per the contract. He would lose nothing. Meanwhile, we would have to look under every stone in Liyue, hoping and praying that the hairpins do actually still exist somewhere in this world. So vivid that Paimon thinks it might be experience talking. <laughs> oh, it certainly is. I've seen my fair share of situations like this, and brute force methods are certainly one way of resolving them. Fortunately, I have far more elegant solutions at my disposal. I'll share them with you in due course. Well then, since you're so experienced in dealing with problems like this, perhaps you could help me, Miss Yunfei. Oh, that won't be a problem. But first, Mr. Chow, can I ask you to please sign this contract? Huh? Does there have to be a contract for everything? Paimon can't even keep track. It feels like Yanfei is even more concerned with them than a certain someone else we know. These are my formal terms of engagement. Everything prior to now has just been pro bono advice. But for me to investigate any further, I require a written contract. Any work commissioned but not bound by a contract cannot be relied upon. I understand. Then I will be glad to place this matter into your capable hands if you will take it, Miss Yunfei. No problem. Just sign here, and I'll sign too. Okay. Now write your address here, and then sign on this page as well. <laughs> and I'll also need your signatures on pages 5, 7, and on the very last page. Finally, if you could just use this ink pad to make a handprint over here. <sighs> Juice again. All right, that should do it. My fees are the same as always, and they're written in the contract. Have a look through and let me know if you have any questions. I've had a read through. Everything checks out. Well then, here's your copy of the contract. I will retain the other copy. Not for now, no. Despite how intractable this problem might sound, it will actually be quite straightforward to resolve, once we've got some things squared away. I don't believe you have been part of an investigation like this before, in which case, hopefully this should be quite the experience. Miss Yunfei, I have to ask, why are you helping me? Because, as it happens, I'm currently trying to acquire some Smaragdus Jadeite myself. I noticed strong traces of geo-energy around Mr. Crossel, so perhaps he has, in fact, secured some. Whether he actually made it into an item of jewelry or not is a separate matter, but either way, it's a lead. As long as we follow it, who knows? We might just be able to get our hands on some Smaragdus Jadeite. Also, the idea of someone abusing the law to their advantage? I won't stand for it. But again, let's not dwell on this. Let's go to... hmm... Where can we find someone who processes ore? Ha! Ah, I've got it! Let's pay a visit to Chateau, the boss of the Jade Mystery. He's a professional when it comes to working with stone and ore. If Mr. Crossel had his ore worked on at all, Chateau would undoubtedly have been his first choice. Why, hello there, honored customers. Hello there. Welcome to... Th oh, it, it, it's you, Miss Yenfei. Is, is, is something the matter? Sh surely not more spurious claims that, that my jade betting is rigged and, and no one can ever win? Oh, I swear on all that is sacred. No, nothing of the sort. Has a Snesh 9 merchant named Crossel enlisted your ore processing services recently by any chance? A Snezhnayan merchant named Krosel, you say? Hmm, I do remember that. He brought me a piece of ore, claiming that it was Smaragdus Jadeite. That was the first time I'd ever encountered it, so I had no way of telling if it was really Smaragdus Jadeite or not. But if a customer insists, far be it from me to contradict them. 
He was quite generous with his money, too, so I didn't give it too much thought. I processed the ore as per his request. Hmm. Do you have any leftover debris from your work on it? Why, yes. It was my first time encountering this ore, after all, so I kept a few loose shavings to study myself later. They're right over there, in fact. Thank you, sir. We'll take a look at them. Don't deceive me. The cross sections and patterning suggest that these are Smaragdus nephrite shavings. Yes, it's not particularly rare, nor is it especially valuable. It's used to make jewelry all the time. I've heard it said that Smaragdus nephrite is in fact the outer layer of Smaragdus jadeite, though no one's ever proven it. A thin layer of separation, huh? If you must see for yourself, try examining these shavings for traces of elemental energy. Smaragdus nephrite is an entirely ordinary ore, containing no elemental energy whatsoever. Is that so? Well, we might as well give elemental sight a shot. So, did you find anything? So they really are different! But wait, how come Jichao was able to tell what it was just by looking at the shards? That's pretty awesome! There's nothing special to it. It just so happens that I've come across a great many of these in my time. These two stones actually look very similar. Someone without a deep understanding of them would find it very difficult to tell them apart. There may be only a subtle difference for the casual viewer, but that translates to an astronomical difference in terms of the market price. And, I'm sure, a significant difference in the cost of having them carved into shape. Alright, let's focus up. We're going off on a tangent. But, never mind, Shirto. Why would Mr. Crossel... <sighs> unusual actions have unusual reasons behind them. Let's take some of these shavings back to Chateau. Miss Yenfei? Might I be so bold as to inquire? Um... If you could just confirm for me once more, sir, Mr. Crossel did indeed claim that the ore he brought to your store was in fact Smaragdus Jadeite, did he not? Uh, yes, that's right. I still have a record of the job with me, in fact. Um, here. It says quite clearly, one chunk Smaragdus Jadeite, uncut. Then I have no further questions, but could I borrow the processing record and these stone shavings? Of course. But might I ask why you need them? Oh, I have my reasons. Ah, yes. Please sign here on this affidavit. This document shall serve as signed proof that these stone shavings originated from the, uh, ore that Mr. Crossel brought to your store. Please read it carefully. Hmm, yes, I see, I see. <laughs> Forgive me for asking again, Miss Yanfei, but might I know the nature of the incident on this occasion? I wouldn't say there's been an incident, just a minor issue. Thank you, sir. I'll take these with me. Thank you, sir. With this hard evidence to back us up, Crusoe won't dare try to deny what he did! On the contrary, this is far from sufficient to build a case. We need to find something a little more... compelling. If you want to make jewelry, you need a professional jewelsmith. <sighs> Let me think. Jewelry... Jewelry... Hmm... Nope. Aha! Got it! Singsy. She often helps people to find a jewelsmith. Let's go pay her a visit. Well, that was quick. How come you know so many people? Because lots of people come to me for legal advice every day. As you know, Liyue Harbor is the city of contracts. And contracts, well, I should say laws, are very important to us. But the amendments made by the Tianchuan to our laws are unnecessarily complicated. How can I put this? It just seems like they're hard to understand and impossible to finish. As such, legal advisors like myself provide quite the popular service indeed. 
So you help them make sense of the law. But didn't you say that it's hard to understand and impossible to finish? Yes, well, that's no obstacle because I've memorized all the legal codices. You memorized them? <laughs> you sound surprised. Knowing the law inside out is a legal advisor's bread and butter, you know? Oh, this has nothing to do with being an adeptus. I just like reading things. Again, with that casual tone. Well, that's that then. Let's go look for Sing Si. But we have some new items in. Oh, Miss Yenfei, it's you. Has something happened? Did the client from last time... Uh... Have no further trouble from then on? Yes, of course. I'm just here to ask you a few questions. Has a merchant by the name of Crossel asked you to put him in contact with a jewelsmith recently? Crossel? Yes, I remember him. He's a merchant from Snezhnaya, no? Yeah, he came to me with a chunk of something he called Smaragdus Jadeite. The design of the hairpins that he gave me was quite intricate, so it took me some work to find someone who was up to the job. Eventually, I found an older jewelsmith who made them exactly according to his specifications. This order was on hold for a very long time, and only completed quite recently, which is why I remember it so well. Doesn't seem like there's any evidence to be found here. Miss Inksy, I'd like for you to confirm for me once more. When Mr. Crossell commissioned you to find him a jewel smith, did he or did he not assert that the material he presented to you that day was called Smaragdus Jadeite? Yes, I'm sure of it. The hairpins were made using many expensive materials, and the asking price was quite high, so we had to put this transaction on record with the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Mr. Crosel wasn't very familiar with the necessary procedures, so I filed it on his behalf. I also kept a copy for my own records. See for yourself, the item is called Smaragdus Jadeite Twin Phoenix Pins. The inlaid gemstone is recorded as Smaragdus Jadeite. The document even has the official seal of the Ministry on it. Thank you, Singsi. Now, could you let me borrow this document? Sure. It isn't serving much purpose here anyway. I take it, then, that there's been some more trouble? Nothing you need to worry about. Just a minor issue. I'll return your document as soon as I'm done with it. Thanks again. Why is everyone's first reaction always to assume someone or something is in trouble? Hmm. I believe we have almost all the evidence we need. We just need to make one last trip. Let's go to Boo Boo Pharmacy to speak with Dr. Baiju. The weirdo with the snake around his neck? What do you want to speak to him for? Because only he can provide an authoritative statement confirming that Smaragdus Jadeite is harmful to the human body. Once we have this final piece of evidence in our hands, we can wrap this case up. To what do I owe the pleasure? Though I'm afraid that if you're looking for our little Chi-Chi, she's out gathering herbs. And if it isn't Miss Yenfei as well, now that's an even rarer honor. What business brings you here, might I inquire? Some charlatans peddling ineffectual medicines again, no doubt? No, no. I'm here this time to ask if you're familiar with Smaragdus Jadeite. 
Smaragdus Jadeite? Why, yes, there is some information about it included in the sixth commentary on the Seven Mountain Treatises. The Seven Mountain Treatises states that this substance springs forth from stone marrow within the mountains and will bring disaster to any mere mortals who touch it. It is abundant in elemental energy, so if someone without a vision is in contact with it for a prolonged period, best case scenario, they fall ill. Worst case scenario, they'll suffer great changes in personality and their illness will only ever get worse. Huh. Anyway, I'm sure you didn't come all this way just to chit-chat. Knowing you, Yenfei, and given the specific nature of your question, I suppose that you're about to ask me to write an official affidavit attesting to the pharmaceutical peculiarities of Smaragdus Jadeite? That is indeed the case. If you would be so kind, Dr. Baiju. No trouble at all. It's just a single document. Won't take me a moment. I would mention, though, that you are not the only one who's developed a curiosity for Smaragdus Jadeite recently. A Snezhnayan merchant came to ask me about it not long ago. But after I gave him my reply, his expression shifted to one of remarkable disappointment. I wonder, Miss Yenfei, if your pressing business might be related to the Snezhnayan merchant? Ah, uh, you needn't concern yourself about that, Dr. Baiju. Thank you for penning us that document. I'll make sure to compensate you in due course. You're too kind. Take care now. That Baiju guy is as weird as ever. Is it just Paimon, or does it feel like he was fishing for something back there? Dr. Baiju's always been like that. Well, we have the evidence we need. Let's go find Mr. Crossel. Miss Yanfei, have you finished your investigation? I trust you will now be in a position to assess the compensation due. Yes, my investigation is indeed concluded. I can now provide a final figure for the amount payable. Wonderful. Well then, please, could you do the honors, Miss Yanfei? Of course. Ahem, <clears throat> according to the stipulations of the contract, Mr. Crossel. You must pay Mr. Chow ten times the original transaction price in Mora. Sure. Wait, what? M me pay her? Surely there's been some kind of mistake, Miss Yanfei. Not at all. According to my investigations and the material evidence that we've gathered, the substance claimed to be Smaragdus Jadeite that was inlaid within the Smaragdus Jadeite twin phoenix pins that you rented out to Mr. Chow was, in fact, Smaragdus Nephrite. Now, the contract states very clearly that ten times the price shall be paid should the article not be genuine. Accordingly, you are liable for this sum, which is payable to Mr. Chow in Mora. Material evidence? What material evidence? Why, Miss Yanfei, you cannot frame me like this! I spent a huge sum to obtain that Sparagdus Jadeite, and yet you claim that the ore inlaid on the hairpins is somehow fake? I demand to see your evidence! Indeed. Only a testimony from an expert witness involved in the processing of the ore can serve as an authoritative assessment of whether it is genuine. Traveler, please produce the evidence in question. This is a processing record from the Jade Mystery, along with stone samples and an affidavit signed by the business owner, Chateau. Seriously? Even the boss there couldn't differentiate between Smaragdus Jadeite and Smaragdus Nephrite. How does this prove anything? In any case, Smaragdus Nephrite is the outer layer of Smaragdus Jadeite. So I had him cut away the Nephrite, he returned the valuable Jadeite core to me, and some Nephrite samples remain in the store. What am I missing exactly? Th that's an unsubstantiated belief! Well, your claim that my ore is fake is just as unsubstantiated. And we are here to talk about evidence, aren't we? Ugh. Looks like our first piece of evidence didn't convince him at all! Seems like he came prepared. What should we do next? Hard evidence. Something legally binding. We have just the thing. Show him, Traveler. 
<laughs> this document proves that my hairpins are the real deal, doesn't it? This is the Ministry's seal, after all. It shows that the ore inlaid on the pins is indeed Smaragdus Jadeite. Our second piece of evidence didn't work either. And this guy's getting more belligerent by the second. Hmm. You know, you could be right. Perhaps the hairpins are the real deal after all. Of course I'm right. All the evidence shown supports my story. Well, hang on a moment now, because I do recall one final piece of evidence that we haven't revealed yet. Traveler, would you do the honors? This shall serve as decisive proof of our case. What's this? Smaragdus Jadeite springs forth from Stone Marrow within the mountains and will bring disaster to any mere mortals who touch it. Sustained contact with Smaragdus Jadeite over a prolonged period will, in less serious cases, cause a mild malady, while in serious cases, the patient may suffer a dramatic change of personality and fall seriously ill. Mr. Crossel, were you aware of these peculiar properties of Smaragdus Jadeite? I... I had no idea. No idea, you say? Hmm, I'd guessed as much. But for you to have rented out such a dangerous item... I'm afraid that this falls outside the scope of my work, but within that of the Ministry of Civil Affairs. However, I'm sure that the Ministry will be relatively lenient considering that, as you say, you were ignorant of the danger you posed. Don't worry, Mr. Crossel. I will make sure that all the evidence presented here will be handed over to the Ministry. I trust that you'll give them your full cooperation in their investigations. What? Wait! Wait! I... I knew. Oh, so you knew? Oh, dear, Mr. Crossel. But if you knew of Smaragdus Jadeite's dangerous properties beforehand, why would you... Huh? No, uh, I... <sighs> the hairpins aren't actually... Aren't actually inlaid with genuine Smaragdus Jadeite? Is that what you were about to say? You do understand, Mr. Crossel, that this means that you will have to pay Mr. Chow ten times the original price in Mora? Mr. Crossel, your answer, please. My client and I are waiting. I... 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 Yamp, he's seriously intimidating right now. It's like she's a different person. I admit it. I confess. The ore I had and laid on those hairpins was... Was Smaragdus Nephrite. B but I'm a victim in all of this, too. I invested a great deal of time and money into acquiring that small amount of Smaragdus Jadeite in the hopes of turning it into a piece of jewelry that would fetch a fine price. But after receiving it and carrying it around for a few days, I started to feel extreme discomfort. I couldn't sleep a wink or eat a single bite. I... I was in a constant state of agitation, too. I went to Boo Boo Pharmacy to get myself checked out, only to discover that this sort of stone cannot be worn as jewelry. But how could I let all that money go to waste? That's why I had another pair of hairpins made from Smaragdus Nephrite, which is almost indistinguishable from Smaragdus Jadeite. I kept the real Smaragdus Jadeite in a specially made box. I daren't touch it again. I was worried that someone would see through it, which is why I only dared to rent them out, not sell them. And then to top it all off, Chichao lost the hairpins after I rented them out to her. Exactly! If they weren't the real deal, why'd you make her pay so much, hmm? I... I didn't want to either, but when I purchased that Smaragdus Jadeite, some of my business partners found out. I knew they'd be watching closely to see how much I could make off it. If word got out that I sold a pair of fake hairpins, then my days in this line of business would be over. All right, let's cut the appeals phase right there. I failed to see what bearing any of this has on your transaction with my client. According to the contract, you must pay Mr. Chow ten times the original price in Mora, and that is final. Ten... ten times? Crusoe looks like he could faint any second! As for me, according to my contract with Mr. Chow, 20% of that sum will go to me. 20%? That's as much as I spent on that Smaragdus Jadeite! Um, there's no need. It's fine. You don't have to pay me that much, Mora. Even if the Smaragdus Jadeite on those hairpins was fake, I still bear responsibility for losing them. Legally or not, I think I owe some compensation for that. 
Ms. Jichou, you... However, Mr. Crossel, since you have no use for that chunk of Smaragdus Jadeite, why don't you give it to me instead? I'll consider us even. What? But... I... All right, then. This cursed rock's brought me enough grief as it is. Miss Yenfei, I'll turn this Smaragdus Jadeite over to you. I trust that it will suffice as remuneration? Well, um, that's not quite how the rules say this should go. But whatever, it'll do. Thanks so much for your help this time, Miss Yunfei. When you have the time, I'll be sure to visit and express my thanks more appropriately. Oh, come on. No need to stand on ceremony. Now, if I may confirm this again, Mr. Chow, have you and Mr. Crossel come to an understanding? Hmm? Well, yes, I believe we have. Well then, that's good. Mr. Crossel, it seems that my client has no further claims against you. Is... is that so? That's good. That's good. Actually, Mr. Crossel, I'd like to talk business for a second if I may. I could see from the hairpins you produce that you're very skilled in jewelry design. My family, on the other hand, works in the ore business, and we have a fair stock of fine ores. If we could join forces, your jewelry designs and our choice ores, I think we could do some fine business between us. I, uh, let me think for a moment. Well, that's that. And we've got the Smaragdus Jadeite that Granny wants, too. All's well that ends well, eh? Exactly. Usually when someone tells us they've lost something, we end up searching all over the place for it. But this time, you managed to solve the problem with just a big stack of documents. <laughs> Even though the solution didn't involve actually finding the hairpins. The right solution depends on your perspective on the problem. The objective of my client, Mr. Chow, was to reduce her liability to pay compensation. So, rather than looking high and low for some hairpins, proving that the rented item was nowhere near worth what the vendor had claimed it to be was the more efficient solution. An Adeptus. Speaking of, you took part in that battle, didn't you? In which case, you would have heard what Granny said. Liyue Harbor is now a city ruled by humans. The title of Adeptus means precious little to me compared to my job as a legal advisor. In any case, don't you think that the Liyue Harbor of today needs legal consultancy far more than it needs adeptal powers? Paimon can think of someone who would definitely disagree with your reasoning. Well, since we got what we came for, it's time to pay Granny a visit. I bet she's been on tenterhooks for a while now. My name is Xiangling. I'm a chef from Liyue. My favorite place is the chicken. I mean, the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Não era aqui, era aqui. Ah, tá aqui. Ah, you've returned. How did it go? Were you able to find the Smaragdus Jadeite? Good, good. Then we have all the materials we need. 
Well, if we're all set, Granny, I'll get going now. Got a ton of clients waiting for me back at the office. Oh, you. All right, then. Go see to your business. Granny should be able to handle the rest. I'm off, then. Bye! Oh, yes, Traveler. Make sure you don't lose the business card I gave you. I've been looking into the laws of other nations as well. If you should ever bump into any trouble with the law, come find me directly. Regulars get discounts, too. Come now, child. Are you leaving or are you not? If you have no wish to leave, perhaps you'd like to help me clean my teapot, hmm? <laughs> I'm leaving! I'm leaving! <sighs> that child. Goodness knows where she learned to be so rambunctious. Her father was hardly so riotous or fond of talking nonsense back in the day when he stood beside Rex Lapis. Ah, <sighs> indeed she is. Liu has changed. And the Adepti must also learn to change. Yan Fei might be overly garrulous, but she is also the most intimately acquainted with the city among us all. Ah, Liyue is not the same place I once knew. All right then, let us speak of this no more. Back on topic, I believe that I still owe you a little gift. Oh, Paimon's so excited! How is it made? Ha <laughs> ha It is but a single teapot. It shan't take long at all. Just wait here for a moment. Hoo <laughs> hoo! There we go. This serenity pot is all yours now. Hold it firmly. If you were to drop it, oh, goodness, who knows what might happen. Take these blueprints with you as well. You'll need them if you wish to make your teapot a little more lively inside. Wait a minute, Granny. How exactly are we supposed to use this teapot? Oh, you needn't worry about that. I've already arranged for a certain little helper to await you within this teapot. She will explain everything you need to know about it. Vamos a entrar en la tetera. If you ever want to trade tactics, I'm always ready. Hmm. This is a peaceful neighborhood. It's hard to remain on dry land for so long. I never quite seem to get my land legs back. This is a peaceful neighborhood. If you ever want to trade tactics, I'm always ready. This is a peaceful neighborhood. Neighborhood. 
If you ever want to trade tactics, I'm always ready. This is a peaceful neighborhood. It's hard this to remain on dry land for so long. I could never quite seem to get my land legs back. If you ever want to trade tactics, I'm always ready. neighborhood. If you ever want to trade tactics, I'm always ready. Ah, uh, cold this beer a after a hard day's work. Nothing like it. Vamos a entrar en la tetera. <ríe> tetera. <coughs> ¿Cómo que colocar? Guardada flotante. Sin más esmeralda. Y la del frescor. Patio de la seda. Tengo impresión de seda para desbloquear. Alcanza el nivel 40 de gracia del cerezo sagrado para obtener. <risa> la virgen santa. <risa> este... <risa> Morada flotante, cima esmeralda o la del frescor. ¡Frescor! Eh... Sí, la del frescor, ¿no? Que sé. Sí. Bueno, no pasa nada. 
O sea, que se supone que está en mi casa, ¿no? Del frescor. Qué guapo, loco. Consigue... 30 trozos de madera. Consigue tres trozos de madera. Si you ever want to trade tactics, I'm always ready. Primera ronda. Comprueba el menú de colocación y guardia tu decoración. Entra en la finca, fabrica un tinte, fabrica una tela. <ríe> Qué máquina, loco. Y este se supone que será el acompañante, ¿no? Vamos a dar una vueltecita. Oye, pues grande, ¿eh? Pues supongo yo que a todas las zonas de esas abajo se podrá bajar. ¿Pero qué pasa? ¿Que me dice que vaya a un sitio en concreto o qué? Vamos a ver qué dice aquí el colega. Wow. It seems that we have a visitor. It's a huge finch. Excuse me, I am not a finch. I am a teapot spirit, and you may call me. Um, hang on a moment. What am I supposed to be called again? Oh, call me. I suppose you may call me hey, Tubby. So you're the little helper. Madam Ping mentioned? Madam Ping? Oh, you must mean Ping. Yes, she did summon me here. She told me much about you. You may leave all matters regarding the upkeep of this realm to me. Your journey may be far from over. But at least this way, you will not want for a comfortable place to sleep each night. Though it is the Adepti who create realms such as this, they generally do not have the time of day to attend to the banal matter of their maintenance. Thus, we Teapot Spirits were created to help guard their realms and manage their affairs. You may consider me a butler, if you will. Now, allow me to explain this realm to you. Have you any blueprints on you? Specifically, Blueprints with beautiful rooms, chairs, and the like. As long as you have a blueprint, you can refashion this realm however you please. Blueprints? Oh, that's right! Granny handed us some when she gave us the teapot, didn't she? Let's take them out and have a look. Yes, these are the blueprints I'm talking about. Go on, open them up. Just commit the image of the objects to memory and prepare the necessary materials. Then simply release the thought from your mind and the object in the blueprint shall appear within this teapot. Wow! Is that all it takes? Then we could build a whole city inside, couldn't we? Mm, I doubt it. A golden-eyed adeptus explained this to me at some point in the past. He said that even though subspace creation is a product of adeptal power, even that has its limits. This world is not a true one, after all. It provides merely a moment of brief respite from the mortal realm, not a means of escaping it entirely. A golden-eyed adeptus? Paimon wonders, who could that be? I hardly remember myself. What's more, I have never seen that Adeptus again since. Well, let's not dwell on that. Have a look around. Best you get accustomed to this realm. If there's anything you would like to ask, just look for me. A ver. Mensaje importante. 
Traducida invocar a la receta de interactuar con ella para entrar. Una vez en su interior, también podrás usarla, invocarla e interactuar con ella para salir. De igual modo es posible salir de la guerra, abrir directamente el mapa y escogiendo un punto de transporte. Correcto. Ahora con el espíritu de la arena, como quiera. Perfecto. Puedes crear todo tipo de objetos en la interfaz de, fa de fabricación. Correcto. Ahora con el en el mundo abierto. Ok. Uh -huh. Ah, cold beer after a hard day's work. Nothing like it. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Ajá. <sighs> Interesante. Escoge el botón de colocación. Pero en toda regla, colega. O sea, gente te deja poner dentro de la zona, ¿no? ¿O qué? Es como una especie de... A ver... Pero lo he puesto... Es que estoy en la parte de atrás, ¿no? Claro, tío, es que estoy en la parte de atrás. Tiene la... Ese es el actual. Claro, es que esto está mal, tío. Pongamos la terracita aquí en el lado. ¿Qué o qué?
Toma! Esto es para forjar... Esto es para fabricación. Sí, no hace falta que esté al lado de la casa. Fabrica un tinte... Esto es para fabricación. A ver... ¡Wow! Claro, como no gasto nada. <ríe> como no gasto nada. Fíjate, ahora puedo hacer lo que me dé la gana. Mira. Como no gasto nada. Y esa es la cola. Ha hecho que bien hecho está, ¿no? Qué guapo, tío. Y seguro que tendrá alguno, algún bono de. de fabricación. Qué guapo, tío. La gente se te puede unir. Esta es la casa, esta es mi casa. Qué guapo, tío. Qué chulo, tío. Con habitaciones y dos, tío. Te hace ocasión, ¿no? ¿O qué? Qué guapo, tío. Lipa. Qué chulo, tío. Han hecho un buen un buen editor, eh. Momento. If you ever want to trade tactics, I'm always ready.
If you ever want to trade tactics, I'm always ready. Bueno, vamos a ver. Eh... Estos son los planos. Esto tengo que hacer la ofrenda. Si sí, las misiones legendarias también tengo que hacerlas, tío. If you ever want to trade tactics, I'm always ready. Que este juego, tío, tiene 8500 cosas, loco. La jatetera. It's hard to remain on dry land for so long. Never quite seem to get my land legs back. No sé por qué mandó una plataforma, pero bueno. A ver, de dónde está la mina de dónde. Mira, nada más que por entrar a la jatetera todos los días que entres te dan 15.000 de, de mora, tío. ¡Qué máquina, loco! ¿Cómo son tan máquinas, tío? A ver, yo lo que quiero ver... Es que yo creo que en el menú de la tetera... Vale. Yo creo que en el menú de la tetera... Deberían de... De poner otras cosas, pero... No, pero está bien. A ver. If you ever want to trade tactics, I'm always ready. Sí, me piden permiso antes. Sí. Pues yo creo que ya está. Lo único que habría que ir probándolo todo. Pero como no quiero hacerlo... Toma. Pero como no quiero hacerlo de prisa y corriendo... Eh... La X es para... Para poner cosas. Maybe you're not used to the place at the moment, but once you've materialized enough rooms and furniture through subspace creation, it will feel just like home. Adora. O sea que esto también tiene nivel. Uh -huh. Oh, oh, mamá. Para que la tetera confíe más en mí. Flipa, chaval. Cambiar diseño. 
Ah, si quiero cambiar el diseño, tengo que... Vale. Teletienda. Decoraciones. Sí, a de comer de... ¡Jo! <ríe> Teletransporte di dimensional. No, con uno me vale. Pero ¿dónde lo pondría? ¿Fuera o dentro de la casa? Semilla y todo, tío, qué guapo, tío. If you ever have any questions about the realm within, you may ask me. Qué guapo, tío. Pero qué pasa, que Gordy siempre se queda ahí o qué? Es Gordy el protector. A ver. Claro, será claro, un mundo interior. A ver, ¿qué hay por aquí? If you ever want to trade tactics, I'm always ready. Es que el Tartaglia, tío, yo, yo, es que me mola más la otra, tío. Ah, cold beer after a hard day's work. Nothing like it. Yo. Yo prefiero el otro, sinceramente. A ver. Ocho encargos de del día para... Joder, tío, es que el juego te tiene 2500... 8000, no, 2500 cosas, loco. Vale. Pues... Pues como tampoco quiero hacerlo de pis y corriendo Que quiero ver a ver qué puedo colocar, dónde lo puedo colocar y todo el rollo Plano, botella, atrapamiento Tengo 3 millones de mora Tengo 3 millones de mora, tío. What the hell, brother? Fíjate, todas estas cosas. Prototipo arcaico. 
Qué guapa la espada esa, ¿no? Sombra blanca. Estas cosas son las cosas que puedo forjar. Carta náutica. ¿240%? Ya, tío, pero... ¿250% de golpe, tío? O sea, eso es para estudiarlo, ¿eh? ¿Otro tipo ámbar? ¿Esto qué? ¡Guau! Wow, eso es bueno, ¿eh? Prototipo ámbar. Nivel 1, pero eso... Catalizador. ¡No! sin querer, tío. En serio, tío. Yo quería hacer esta en vez de la otra. Yo quería hacer la otra, tío, en vez de esta, tío. It's hard to remain on dry land for so long. <sighs> bueno, va. Es igual, si tarde o temprano lo haré. Tampoco pasa nada. Bueno, pues lo voy a dejar aquí. Lo voy a dejar aquí. Porque se me hace muy tarde ya. Así que ya sabéis. A las 11 por Twitch. Todos los días. Así de fácil. Y sencillo. Aviso por Twitter, como siempre. Así que mañana más.